No. No. Are you shaving? Oh, we, we all that for you to come on here looking like Terry Hatcher from Desperate what Housewives. What do you mean? I've been waiting for you fell asleep. <laughs> the girls are very shocked that we're so late. We're so late. Hi, girls. <laughs> You know what? The true terror is out here tonight. It's very scary tonight. I am here tonight. This is a brand new show. We keep we are the hostess and we keep creating shows, but then we also cancel shows. <laughs> we just canceled the cooking show. Yes. We canceled True. officially. We would like to say cooking the future has been canceled. <laughs> the response was horrible. The reviews were in. The, it had the worst numbers. It had the worst likes. No, it, it's not. It did not. It was just the you know the reception was a little lukewarm. I feel like the girls were bothered, honey. <sighs> Cooking the future is officially canceled until further notice, honey. We're we're we decided, we made an executive decision. I think Cooking the Future has been canceled. Also, do you want? We might as well let them know. I think entering the VR world has been canceled too been canceled uh-huh we're on the fence uh of the big girl show the because we we we're, we've been having a hard time finding big girls to come on the show the big girls are a little they're shy they're very shy <laughs> <laughs> we've been having so yeah we've officially we've been canceling the, the all the shows but you know what we will continue to give you new shows uh, and right now, this is a brand new show. So what we're going to do today is we are going to take, you can either call in and show us your face, or you could call in and just show us, just, we can listen to your voice, however you want to do it. Uh, but we invite everyone, call in and share with us your scariest paranormal story. Ooh. When you are sure by the paranormal. If you've ever had an experience from the beyond. Have you ever had an experience from the beyond, Joella? Plenty. I mean, I'm still going. The last time it was um, my grandma's birthday and she's passed and my brother called me and we we're talking about her. And right when we started talking about her, her picture frame popped off no. of my wall. And it's no. happened before when I, yes. So then I said, you know what? It's a coincidence, whatever. If it happens again, then I know she's here. Mm -hmm. So then the other the other side of the wall had a picture and boom, that one no. flew. Mm -hmm. So it's just a couple months ago. Oh my God, that's scary. That's very scary. That's yeah. scary. So, I mean, I don't know why I feel that it wasn't her. If that makes any sense. I feel like it was you feel like it was like a shady entity, like a demon? Yes, being, you know, trying to get my attention. <laughs> have you ever had, uh, have you ever hooked up with a ghost? Did you, have you ever I had some ghost? A long time ago, I did. Did you feel him enter your body? I felt more than that. It was like a divine connection, something I've never experienced before. When he would caress my neck, it literally gave me tingles all over my body that I've never, ever felt before. No. And then I started feeling something down there. And, you know, I don't really like doing the, the, the whole stuff, but there was something different about this ghost. No. Something was taking his time, and he knew exactly where to go. And, oh, girl, make sure to get that big one standing up right there. Where? <laughs> it's so big. Where is oh, it? Big, no. Big. Manscaped over here. Oh, you're yeah. lying. No, there's no, there's no <laughs> hair. There's no hair here. Uh -huh. No. And then but what no, happened? So, no. as Joella's always lying about something, honey, that's what y'all said about my nail clipper. And I didn't want to go downstairs to get it. And I showed you that's real. I am not lying, okay? I had a pounding by a ghost. And it's actually very common. No. Well, you mm -hmm. know, I was watching, I've been re-watching Grey's Anatomy, 
And I remember that uh, the character of Izzy, Izzy Stevens on Grace, she starts having sex with a ghost on the show. It's very, very real. It's very amazing. I mean, you're also asleep when this happens. So it, it, you, it could be a dream. To me, it was real. No. But I loved it. Yeah. I feel like even if you were in dream state and you're dreaming the ghosts, you know, oh, you're feeling it. It's them. It's them connecting with you. Something tells me. Something tells me that you you were just having a dream, sister, and nothing, and 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 you were just very hern. You were very herny. I was very herny. But you do believe the ghost came into you. Of course, he definitely came into me. I was about to say, did you was there were, were you on prep with this ghost, or or did, was he was he wearing a golden ticket? <laughs> I don't think the ghosts really cared if I was on prep. No, no, the ghost, there was no risk with the ghost. No. <laughs> 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 well, we have Is my people. Camera off? Off? Huh? Oh, my camera was off. Honey, your camera, ca honey. I I you turned it off. <laughs> the camera was shook. The camera was shook. So what are you wearing on your face? I just put on a little bit of this. Um, <laughs> I put a little bit of this expired ass. Um, we have uh, Miss Mark Jacobs, honey, the youth quake moisturizer for the girls. I'm about to put on a little bit. I wanted to show the girls on camera. I'm going to do my makeup while we listen to these scary, scary horror stories. Um, we actually have people already calling in right now. And let me put the link. I'm going to put the link. Uh, actually, actually, I don't need to put the link. If you guys look up above, if you press my pin, I have a pinned comment. The link is there. You can press the link and it, you will automatically enter into the Luscious Studios, state-of-the-art studios. And you will be able to come in and you can either choose if you want to be on camera or you want to be audio only, we would invite you to come on the show and tell us your scariest trade shook by the paranormal story. It doesn't have to be trade. It doesn't have to be trade. It just can be any time that you were shook by the paranormal. We have our first victim. Before we get there, before we get there, I want to shout out to makeup that I'm that I'm really oh, upset. Oh, 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 let's oh, okay. Let's honey. Honey, tell me, honey, tell me. This so is I, our first segment, like, Makeup Blast. I guess this is like an indie brand, Solosa. Oh, my God. This color I've never had before. It's like, for me, I'm going to put it over this. It is so beautiful and muted, like a muted pink. It doesn't have a name, which is shocking. But no. I'm sure she's on Instagram because she sent me these. But I never dig, uh, digged into them. But Solosa. Look how beautiful. It is so pretty. I need you to put batteries in my shade button because my the batteries are dead. It's not it's not shading enough. It's not shady enough. And then so of course I've known about this for like two years. This no. is a new product in one side. It's called Stage White. So you guys have been seeing the white that I've been wearing under my eye? No. Well, it wasn't Ben I. I lied. It was stage white. <laughs> No, are you like one of those influencers that you're changing what you use because now you're trying to No, set no, up? I really, I have been using this. I have the sample. No, I have the samples, but now this is the first time I have the actual uh, product. Like, in, oh. In oh, hold on, let me, let me go off camera, honey. Because I tell you, camera. this look is so, I don't want to put it because it's going to really paint and I can't get it off. It's so white. White, and white powder. powder foundation so it it's going to show and you can hit it in here you can use it on your nose you could use it on your uh, high uh, brow bone which is lovely it's sickening and then I've shot them out I don't even know if they're a makeup brand anymore to be honest I don't even know the quality of makeup but they have blushes Hank and Henry look <laughs> does, does anyone know the tea with Hank and Henry is Hank and Henry still a thing or is Hank and Henry is did she did she pass away? And I don't mean Hank and Henry the person. I mean Hank and Henry the brand. Is she is she coming to us from the beyond? Okay. Well, let's bring in the first victim. We have the first victim shook by the paranormal. Let's bring her in. Oh. 
<laughs> hello, hello, hello. Hello, Luscious. Can you hear me? Honey, we can hear you loud and clear. The terror is coming through. Can you tell us what is your name? How old are my you? Name, Where are you calling from, baby? My name is Mick, and I'm calling from Pennsylvania, and I'm <gasps> 66. <gasps> oh, okay. Come on, Miss Mick. She better come through, Miss Mick. Honey, oh, you're coming from Pennsylvania. Something yeah. tells me the ghosts over there. They're very old school over there. It's very scary in Pennsylvania. Can you tell us, Miss Mick, what is what, what what tell us about this one time or two times? Okay. Well, here it is. This, well, this happened years ago, but what <laughs> happened was I went, I was living by myself and I was wow. I went to bed and I woke up in bed and above my bed was a floating green head. And it was no. like in a dimly lit and it was mumbling. It was going like rah, 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 rah. and I no. didn't, I thought, I don't know what it's saying. It didn't really sound like English. I couldn't tell. But what I did was I just thought, I'm just not gonna listen. I'm just oh. gonna pretend the floating head is not it's talking not to me. No. Yeah, yeah. So Man. I just it, kind of what? Oh, Joella. When you woke up the next day, were you? Did your uh, rectum was it in pain? <laughs> no. Because no. honestly, to me, this sounds like because paranormal falls in with the alien uh, yeah. community. To me, this sounds like you were visited by an alien, probably from Spredica, and he was ready to spread you. And the mumbling, yeah, he was it like, could have been. Yeah. But anyway, I just, my way of dealing with it was to like just pretend it wasn't. Tune it out. Miss Mick, can yeah. I ask you, were, were you on mushrooms? Were you like on, were you on acid? Were you on medicated in any way? Were you connected to Mother Nature? Was, was there drugs? No, that, no, it was just sleeping and just no mushrooms, no drugs, nothing. Oh, so anyway, I just turned, I tried to pretend I wasn't bothered by this floating green head that was mumbling above my bed. And uh, so I just turned over and I went to sleep. And then I woke up later and I thought, was there a head floating over my bed mumbling to me? And there was. There was. <laughs> so, you know, I just did what I thought was best at the time. Miss Miss Mick, do you, do you, what do you think now in retrospect? You know, generations, generations later, we've lived lives. What do you think that head was? Do you think it was it was like a ghost, a spirit, a demon, or do you think it was maybe like an alien or or something from the universe from another planet? I really, it's hard to explain what it was. I don't think it was a ghost. Maybe an alien. I don't know, though. It's so hard to tell. But listen, I wanted to tell both of you that I really enjoy your shows you're doing. And I like your stories. I, I get cracked up by the trade stories. They're very <laughs> funny. And uh, I just appreciate both of you. I'm glad you're doing this. Thank you, Miss Mick. Oh my God, we love that so much. That's yeah. so scary. That alien. What, do you think maybe maybe it was the little flubber, the little flubber head from Ghostbusters? Well, it did kind of look like something from a movie, maybe, but just it was just the head. There was no body, <gasps> and it was sort of mumbling too. The mumbling was weird. It was probably uh, Jessica Hart. What's her name? Angela Hart. Angela Hart. <laughs> yeah. Check it up on you. <laughs> it was Shangela Hart. <laughs> now, Miss Vic, in the moment when you when you saw the head, you said you ignored it. Did you feel terror? Were you scared? Well, you know, the thing was, I don't know if you've ever had a, a floating head appear over your bed, but <laughs> you, you think that would be, well, I'm glad you can relate, but you think that would be very scary, but at the time it was just kind of like, I'm trying to sleep, you know? Oh. Like, <laughs> just, like, just, just like leave me alone. I can relate, honey. I can yeah. relate. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> I've been there. We all yeah. been there. Yeah. So anyway, that's my Has story. Ever come back? Short. Miss Miss May. No, she never did come back. No. She never came back. She never came over and pounded you out or nothing. No, nothing like that. Oh my God. Oh my, that's scary. that is very scary. The, the the headless, the green head, the green head, the green head. floating, mumbling head. Yes, I wonder what that was, Joella. What do you think that head was? What do you think that head was coming from? I told you, I think it was it's an alien from Spredica. They <laughs> they're very rare, but very real. Traveled thousands of light years to get here, and he chose you. You are the chosen one, but you said, fuck this shit. I'm going to bed. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Mick, thank you for calling. We're glad you survived and you yes, thrived and you continue you. to push. She continued to push. Okay. Well, thanks a if lot to both. If the if the head ever calls, if, if the head ever comes back next time, please pay attention. And see what she's I, trying to tell you, honey. I'll try to get some more details next. Try time. to get some more tea. Okay, thank okay. you, Miss Meg. Everybody, make some All noise right, for Miss in the house. Oh my God, I live for Miss Meg. Miss, something tells me Miss Meg. She gets trade. She does. She something never. tells me Miss Meg. She gets some trade. You know what she gives me? The beef cake hunter vibe sheet. Something tells me she gets <laughs> afraid. What? That man. Okay, I don't so these men know go in knowingly that they're being recorded or they're secretly being recorded. No 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 they know she pays them top dollar honey. She she that's why she, she pays them top. the beef cake hunter the reason why she's getting the beef cake is because she's paying for the beef cake and she pays so the, these hot ass beef come over and they let themselves be recorded and but you know those men they only let her you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna put your mouth on me but I'm not touching you type of energy. So do you think they're signing contracts or this is just like here you go here's money? Do I think that the green head is above watching? Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. The beef head. Well, let me tell you when the beef cake hunter is 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 um is feasting, the green bobblehead is is up there watching, honey. Okay. Total sense for some strange reason. Something tells me, Miss Mick, she is low key. She is the beefcake hunter part two in Pennsylvania. She alien takes, hunter. She takes care of the girls over there, and I live. She, she doesn't get probed. She probes the aliens. Right. That's why she said, "Baby, I'm not bothered, honey. This ain't nothing new for me. I've been oh, doing this for years." <laughs> Miss <laughs> Mick said, "Honey, I've been doing this for you. Don't bother me. I'm going back to bed, bitch." She, she's four thousand years old, and she looks fabulous. She looks fabulous. I live. Let me tell you, that woman's got she stories. Miss Mick, you ever want to come back on the show and tell us some trade stories? Nick, tell us when you built the pyramids and you pounded the guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's bring in our next victim. Oh, oh my! God. Hello. Hello, hello, Joe. Hello, hello. We did it, Joe. We did it, Joe. What is your, uh, how are you, baby? And where are you from? Hi, I'm Joe. I'm from Houston and I'm 26. Oh my God, Joe. Tell us about that one time that you were truly shook to the core by the It's parents. happened to me multiple times during my life. Like when no. I was little, lots of stuff used to happen to, to me. Um, we used to live in a trailer back in the day. No. And um, what happened basically is that uh, we were just trying to go to sleep and the whole bed shook. And oh. when I mean the whole bed, it's like, it, it's something I, and I try to like think what it was or what, what, um, what caused the, the bed to move. And I still don't know what happened, but the whole, mo the bed moved was when I was a kid. and that really scared me. And another time was as an mm -hmm. adult, um, I was playing video games, falling asleep in a beanbag, and I felt like the presence was, like, sitting on me. No. Took a seat. It took a seat in my chest. And oh. I could feel... <laughs> no. Are you sure that wasn't I me? could feel the pressure, and I was petrified. Like, I, w I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. I couldn't... I All I could feel was just, like, something sitting on me. That was me. Remember when I went to Houston? Like oh, I told, yeah. I, I, I forgot, you got me so drunk. No. <laughs> oh my God. Do you do you think did did did, it, did he ever did he ever did did 
did did she ever move off or she just took a seat and never moved away is she I think ev- I, eventually I, I kind of like was able to like come to my like my senses <laughs> oh and um well, after I came to my senses no. I uh, I went back to my bed but I was like I kind of was like freaked for a while I was like what was that like I was like I was looking at my like at the game and I was looking at myself and I was like I was playing Elden Ring so that that probably was like a nightmare or something but oh. it felt so real it felt like something sat on me and that it was it was real and you know, there's a whole community of bed shaker ghost they love to shake and quake the girls it's okay. been happening for years the <laughs> quakers and the shakers shaking the bed and oh, I'm being serious you can look it up the the shake community and you're going to see this whole, all these stories of their beds being shaken. So yeah. you were the lucky ones. And I have a feeling this person, this ghost that sat on you, she was a big girl. <gasps> oh, like, yeah. she, she took the air off of me. Yeah. She, she was, was like, Joella, get off. Maybe, maybe it was a, maybe it was a big girl and she, she took a seat on her trade and then she, instead of the trade passing away under her, she passed away on top of the trade. And she yeah. took him. She took him with her. She took the, the ghost of uh, Shangela Hart strikes again. Oh. <laughs> no. no, we need to stop saying that because it's going to become a thing. Shangela Hart. Shangela Hart, and then we're going to get a call from Shangela. Shangela's going to be very upset. Shangela is. She she gets very angry whenever we mention her. <laughs> but let me tell you something. This is not Shangela like we've been waddling. It's Shangela Hart, bitch. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> we can say it as many times as we want. <laughs> no. Oh my God, uh, Joe. Ever since this phenomenon happened and someone took a seat on you, on your chest, has have you ever gotten sit on again by a living person? Do you want it to come back? I've gotten sat on multiple times. For perhaps <laughs> no, no, no. But um, no. I mean. Um, I've had maybe perhaps like sleep paralysis where like you can't move and you're like <laughs> awake, but you you just can't move. You can't blink. You, all you can do is blink, actually. And you just can't think really hard and kick. I used to have it. And you'd be think, OK, I'm going to kick. I'm going to kick. I'm going to kick. Here it comes. Here it comes. And then boom, you wake up. It works. It really does work. And then um, so do you do you want this ghost to come back? And maybe turn around the position instead of your chest, go lower, or do uh, you it goes to just completely vanish. <laughs> yes, I, I I would love that. Well, that which one? Nice. Oh, you want to do and vanish? Nice. Of course. That actually would be really nice if you're just like if you're. Can you imagine if you're just sleeping and? You know, I mean, I can't imagine because I'm not a top, but I'm assuming tops, this is how they feel. They start to get herny, and then you just have somebody come over and just take a seat, and you don't even have to do anything. That would be very convenient. I yeah. invite person number one, if you're a top out there, which I know a, a lot of tops watch this channel, let me tell you. If you're a top out there and you would be okay with a little ghost just coming over and taking a seat, press the number one. Would you press, <laughs> would you press the number one, Joe? Uh, yes, I would many times. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, Joe. We did it. We did it. <laughs> oh my God! Now, do you remember back in the day when the sh- when the bed was shaking and the bed was levitating and flipping and moving around? <laughs> was did you tell did you tell anybody? Did you call the priest? Who did you tell your parents, your mother, your father? Who did you tell? What happened? Uh, well, we were with my brothers, and my brother and I both jumped up, and we <gasps> both told my mom. So I know it wasn't just me. And your my mom, mom she was not bothered. She was not bothered. She was like, go to sleep. Bother. Yeah, she was not bothered. Your mother said, pinches huerquitos fastidiosos. Cállense de los cinco, vayanse a dormir. Was it possible that your mother was in the other room getting it on, and she was just causing the whole floor to shake and the perhaps <laughs> she was getting pounded joella no joella <laughs> mom mom joella no don't do this to these children no just, just trying to see I, when you're a paranormal hunter like i am no find out every possibility before you finally say it was a ghost 
So maybe it was, you know, mama in the other room getting it on. Maybe it was Shangela Hart. Maybe it was Shangela Hart. I, I'm leaning towards Shangela Hart. It might, it might have been her. <laughs> yeah, Joe's gonna be so pissed. <laughs> Every time we mention Shangela, she calls us and she's like, "Why are y'all shading me?" <laughs> Thank God, can you not mention my name? <laughs> hey, bitch, you're supposed to be canceled. Be <laughs> Shut the <up. laughs> She wants oh. to get paid. <laughs> oh my God, the girls, they're doing too much. Oh my God. Okay. Miss Joe, you know, I'm glad you survived, pulled through, and you were here. And um, Thank you. I hope that, you know, the next time that that paranormal entity comes over, I hope they, you know, they scoot a little bit down and take a seat downstairs. Well, oh. <laughs> I sure I hope they do. Oh my God! Everyone, make some noise and for our surviving, our surviving human being. Thank you, so and I, I, I want to say I love you. I, I love y'all. Oh. Um, long time listener, first time caller, and I, I wish this show to continue going forever and ever. Oh, oh. Miss Joe, are you single, Miss Joe? No, actually, I have my boyfriend. Let me pull up. Is he? Is my he boyfriend. watching? Oh, oh, oh my God! Home is special. Oh, that one. Yeah, we've been going on for like we're about to go for three years. Ooh, that's a what's, what's the secret? Three years. What's the secret? Uh, you gotta find the right person for you. Damn. And look, we <laughs> I'm I'm a nerd. He's a nerd. We both are nerds, and we both like talking to each other, enjoy each other's presence, and being alive. The Being truth. real, you gotta keep him away from the gay clubs. You gotta make sure that he True. doesn't out of the apps. He doesn't like it. You have to make sure to just keep oh. hanging out with the family because you have, those, you have to find one of those reclusive homos. Yeah, because once you bring a Pokemon a, game, a plant game, a homosexual, oh. there. Listen, that homosexual, it once passing, they're gonna make eye contact. He's gonna force it. They're gonna end up. He's gonna end up on his knees. And that's how the relationships end. So you just got to keep steering him away, away from all these hurdles. And that's what kept you going for three. Well, he steers me away from that stuff. So he's oh. the one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And we've been together. Okay. And speaking of trade, didn't you have trade yesterday? You left. You <laughs> What happened? Uh, Luscious to the trade. Oh. oh, me? No, I didn't end up having no trade. I didn't do nothing. Oh. I, didn't go, I fell asleep. <laughs> You do that everything and just I not. Continue, I continue to be the celibate queen, the celibate goddess. <laughs> okay. I haven't been able to pull no trade, honey. Nothing has transpired. But you know what? You could still be celibate. Why, Luscious? You're you're so famous. You have so much money. You're so. Honey, beautiful. that don't mean nothing. That don't mean nothing. That don't mean they're not bothered, honey. At the end of the day, they're not bothered, honey. What I'm trying to tell you, Lush, is you, you can continue to be the celibate queen if you start pounding ghosts. Oh. There no, but go. between me and God, God will know. <laughs> between me and God, God will know. <sighs> oh, my God. Miss Joe, thank you so much for calling in and sharing. Thank that you. Very, very horrific. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye, so nice, let's bring in our next patient in the house. Let's bring in. Patient. No, not patient. This is a big <laughs> this is a victim. Victim number three. Let's bring her in. Hi. <gasps> oh my god. Uh, beauty. Beauty. I've never seen so much beauty, baby. What's your name? How old are you? Where are you calling from, girl? My name is Selena. I'm from Aurora, Colorado. Oh. She's over there in the mountains and the plains and the fields. I am. Oh my God, Miss uh, Selena, tell us about this. This uh, the time that you were very shook to the core. Oh my God, this oh, is paranormal. This is my. This is real. So <laughs> I, <laughs> this is the first time I argued with my dad because we are. He likes to get drunk and he likes to, you know act a little insane. So oh. I was young and I came out as a trans woman. So um, he doesn't accept that. And he still has a hard time. And um, 
he we got into an argument and I was about 18 at the time and I left and I left to my aunt's house and I walked it I walked it I walked it and it was about like two in the morning and I walked it from for like about two or three miles and she lived very far so I walked it and I saw these creatures run across the street and they were dressed in like old Amish clothes and yeah. I no, they look like little dolls. No. And it scared the hell out of me. They no. have those creature faces. Really? And it scared the hell out of me. You know, can you can you tell us what kind of cre like have what's if have we ever seen a creature that looks like this maybe in a movie or something? Can you explain the what the face looked like? They were like almost grimish looking like gross with sharp teeth oh. I, could, I could not explain what they were and no one would believe me no one would believe me what they look like what they were and for the life of me I tried to explain it and <laughs> years by years went by and I finally told somebody from Mexico who was from Mexico and you know you would tell your friends hey like ghost stories and stuff you know and I explained to somebody, hey, this is what I've seen. And he told me that they were Duendes. I love Duendes. Oh, my Duendes, God. Duendes, those are, aren't those Little like gnomes? Guys. They're gnomes. They're like gnomes. Yeah. Gnomes. You've seen Duendes. I love Duendes. I would be like, candy, and they would come get it. So he was like, I have no idea what those are. They would so. run around like, ee! Yes. Ee! <laughs> Me, me. I, I don't know what those are so I was like tripping out tripping the fuck out so they were in like old Amish doll clothes they scared the hell out of me I just closed my eyes and I was like oh my god and I opened they were gone so I was like, oh. if you go to Primer Impacto when you're after this live and type in Duendes Univision and all them they cover duendes like there's no tomorrow. And they, they cover the chupacabras a lot too. Mm. Ooh, they were scary looking, but I just I don't want to see them again. <laughs> One time them. they 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 dug a hole under the house and they found a whole little like a Barbie house of duendes where they lived. It was so cute, and they had tons of candy like candy canes. Oh no. You know what? I will say, Selena, you are the first person that I believe. Really? Mm -hmm. you, yes, I believe your story. And let me tell you why. Because I believe that when you go through something very dark and traumatic, and like, the, to, and maybe this is the, like the superstitious Mexican lady and me, but I always felt that whenever the devil is near, people start acting like with evil and erratic. And the only time I've ever seen something that is like from another world, like something that's either like not living, not from this realm, is when, I, when I've gone through something very tra traumatic and something very dark. And so I feel like, I feel like those are moments when the devil is near and, 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 and it opens, it's like it, it invites these things to come close to you, come near to you. Like it's, it, and I, so I believe you 100% because I've, the only time that I've ever seen something truly, truly scary, and I, I, I saw a red glowing hand yeah. outside. I remember I was at my aunt's house and I saw there was, I saw a red hand. Like it, it, to me, I, I think I saw the devil's hand. Yeah. And when I saw it, it, it 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 was in the in the in the window of her house. She had a she had a door, and the door had a, one of those skinny windows. Mm -hmm. And so the hand was there, and then I just saw the hand move away. But it was like red, but it was like glowing a little bit. And I remember thinking, "Oh my god, that's like the devil." That I just saw the hand of the devil, and um. But that night, I we I went through something very, very one of the most traumatic, like scariest things I've ever gone to. It happened that I've ever gone through in my life. Mm -hmm. um, it was very scary, and I remember thinking the devil is near when when I saw that hand, and I feel like it invites it invites when when bad things happen. Right. I just thought it was just traumatic and scary to me, and 
And I was just like praying to God, like, oh my God, I just want to get to my aunt's house. And like, I wasn't even halfway there. And it was like two in the morning because that's like the witch's hour, you know, in Colorado time. And, you know, just praying that, you know, get home safe. And there's a whole bunch of crazy people out. And then there were, the crazy thing is that there was a man looking for them. Like, <gasps> crazy shit. Like, you know, I thought he was looking for a cat or something. I just wanted to get home. Like, ugh. Oh, it was, it looked like a doll running across the street in some clothes. And and what were you? Is it normal for people in Colorado to be walking around? Why were you walking, girl? I was I was dressed like a hooker because you know, um, I was just barely transitioning and coming out as trans and and it's in America in a Latin and family. It's not okay to you know be trans and it's. And I was, it, especially as a Latin dad, they don't, they're not accepted of it. So I was, uh, they were upset about it. And I just walked home because I, they were upset. So I, I was, uh, I was mad. So I left at two in the morning and I went to my aunt's house and she lived really far away and the buses were not running. And I didn't have a car. So I walked it and it was really dark. Mm. Well, Miss Selena, I think you are so beautiful. Thank you. Um, I just love the shower, so I'm just like messy. We're, and... glad, we're glad you survived this uh, <laughs> minute attack because something tells me that the demon, the devil, was near. I think so too, and I think that there was just a guardian angel walk, walk, watching that day. Because I was like, uh... <laughs> there were the little duende dolls. Is that a dream catcher, Miss Selena? There is because I dream about me dying all the time. Well, there's the paranormal story right there. That's crazy. So why, why do you okay. dream about you dying all the time? I don't know, especially about me having a car crash. And not only that, I, I think of- that you were a woman, an Amish woman in your past life, and that oh. you, you had a, a horse wreck and you passed away. Oh, <laughs> not the horse. Yeah, well, if she wasn't in a car. She's Amish, and you got in a, in a horse wreck, and you're back and having all these weird emotions. And my friend says, "I'm oh, sorry to interrupt you, jo- Joella, but my friend always says when a woman has a birthmark on her arm right here, or if you can see it uh, on her I arm." I do. Right have... See the here we go. Here we go. Joella has the same mark, the mark of the beast. Yes. So she's a witch. So that's what my says. So she's fantastic. We're witches. We're witches and bitches. <laughs> Miss Selena, we're glad you survived, Miss Selena. Everybody make some noise. I love so, you, Selena. Add me on Instagram. I'll follow you. Miss Selena, we need to bring you back for are you single, Miss Selena? I am, sadly. It's always hard we need to bring you on. We need to bring you on. Drag me to love, Selena. Find you some man. Find you a man, honey, up in Colorado. Because let me tell you, the Colorado man, they're watching, honey. They watch. They are, but they're always so, like, kind of rude sometimes. And oh. old, yeah. They are. They're always so stuck up. They always want, like, a petite girl sometimes. But you know what? Let me tell you something. The man who's out there who lives for the Thickum girls, the BBW plus wow. plus plus girls, girl, he's on the down low. They always be hitting me up on the grinder, though. Like, it's... <laughs> all, the girl, all the girls are on the grind. Well, honey, let me tell you something. Come on, drag me to love, because we're going to find you that man. He's going to come through. He's going to okay. through. Definitely, definitely. But they can always find me on Lilac Rose. <gasps> oh. <laughs> What's Lilac Rose? What's Lilac Rose? Is that a hookup site? No, that's my Instagram. Oh, <laughs> I was already gonna download it. Oh, I said, "Oh, girl, I was I'm, I was ready to download." It. I said, "Oh, this woman's got a new hookup side. Let me I let like it." Rose, bitch, it, I sounded, want. it sounded like Ashley Madison, but for the trans girls, like like Rose, a thousand roses, right? Right. Get paid the roses. and the roses on the dresser. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Thank you, thank you for inviting me to your show. I've been following you for a while, especially since the one that we don't talk about anymore. Oh damn! Oh, yeah. the, the little plastic, the little duende, the little wonky lamb, the duende girl, the duende, <laughs> little duende with a with a shark. Great horror story, so you know. Oh, <laughs> so, my God, he's a horror story of his own. 
already messing up my glasses. <laughs> oh, hey, thank you. The thank girls you. are coming in to read, and I live. I live. <laughs> Everyone make some noise and make a round of applause for Ms. Lilac Rose. Thank you for joining us, Ms. Lilac Rose. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you the glamour, Ms. Lilac. <gasps> Let me give some shout outs, honey. We have the shout outs here before we bring in the next the next victim. The next victim. Shout out to Ms. Junior Lopez. We have Ms. Junior Lopez in the house. She said, ladies, do you have a scary childhood story? I love you too. I already shared mine a little while ago. And Joella, um, I think she shared hers too. Shout out to Miss Joanna. We have Miss Joanna in the house. She says a ghost, a ghost, took over my cousin's body. There's a story behind it. Before it happened, we don't know where she is anymore. Damn. I love you, dolls from Canada. Oh my God, the possession, the possession of Emily Lilac Rose. Shout out to Denison Fifty Two. We have Denison Fifty Two. She says the hospital at night monitors alarms in empty rooms. Oh, my God. Can you imagine how many ghosts are at the hospital, honey? Shout out to Denison52. She said, Joella is giving me Elvira, and Luscious is a curandera, honey. <gasps> the girly girl. I'm bouncing at when it hits one hour. I'm out. <gasps> no. I'm going to get trained. I need to. And if I wait any longer, I'm going to miss out. No. Shout out to Marty McFly. We have Marty McFly. She said, oh, my God. I so want to tell my story of the paranormal. Of my ghost demon and my exorcism I had. My video chat isn't working. Honey, come on and just bring in your audio, honey. Bring in your audio. We are taking the paranormal stories. Let's bring in the next caller, honey. Let's bring in the next caller. Oh. Hello. Oh. The make a doll is back. Oh, my God. Oh, I remember you. How are you? Oh, Miss Sparkle Melon. How are you, darling? I'm good. How are you? I forgot. Your sorry. audio, sister, your audio is coming in crunch, crunch. Oh, no. um, hmm. Can Tic you hear me now? Testicular difficulties. Testicular. Oh, just close all your programs. That happens to me. Oh, it, it happens to Joanna. Uh, she forgets to close all okay, your programs. Okay, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Give me a second. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold you here. And give me a thumbs up when you're ready, okay, baby? I'm gonna bring, I'll bring you back on. Let's bring in the next victim. Shalom. Army Couture, hell shalom. Oh, hey, what's up? What's the tea, honey? What is the tea? Well, I don't have a ghost story. I have um, a murder story. Oh. Oh. And you guys had to help me out, though. Yes. <laughs> how to process it. <laughs> Oh my God! So, first of all, tell me yeah. how old are you? Where are you calling from, girl? I'm calling from Palm Springs. Oh, the homosexuals! Yeah, the very, very, very homosexuals. <laughs> how much trade did you have on in Pride Month, Miss Army? Give us uh, a let's just say I didn't overindulge, but I did meet my meet my quota every night. Oh. <laughs> Okay, what was your, okay, can you can you share us can you give us a number? Um at least two. <gasps> two a day. Two a day every two day. A, like like the vitamins. <laughs> okay, was it always were you always getting some tops, some bottoms, or in between? You know, I just, you know, whatever they want. <gasps> oh my two a day for thirty you had sixty men coming in and out, in and out, in and out. I <laughs> there. Yeah. I'm tired. <laughs> Shit. Are you, giving, are you giving a break? Are you giving your, your are you alive? Are you a ghost? <laughs> yes. I'm also I'm also <laughs> I'm also in uh I'm also in line for some uh reconstruction surgery. So yeah. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Oh, I'm just playing. <laughs> what happened? Oh my god, this woman. I'm just, I'm, I had a I'm team just kidding. friend that did that. They she would Pound so much that they ripped all her walls, and she had to get <laughs> cut and sewn back up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> that wasn't me. I don't really bottom. Army so, control, um, aside from your hole getting murdered, what else? Who else got murdered? No, I don't. I don't really bottom. <laughs> I only bottom like twice before. Okay. Well, aside from I, all I, the I, I put on everything. <laughs> aside from all I want the to. 
more that you have murdered. Who else got murdered, girl? What's the more murder story? Oh, okay. So what happened was this is the reason why uh, I probably like stop talking to guys <laughs> from Grinder and stuff. Well, because what happened was so there was this guy that I met on Grinder, and he was like he was into me, and you know we were like. Something tells me this is Mia Paris' best friend. No. <laughs> they just, they're very similar. Miss Army to everybody. You know, he was like, oh. and then next, so yeah, he, so he was like new to talking to guys. The connection, the Walmart the, connection. The, they don't want him to tell the story. The, the, the ghost is cutting the connection. Well, like for me, he turned off the light. 500 people watching this live stream. Yeah, he turned. <laughs> let's get up. Let's get 300 likes on the live right now. Everybody start liking the video. Let's get 300 likes and Joella will stay on the live. If we don't yeah. get 300 likes, Joella is punching out. I'm <laughs> Okay, so, Ms. you have to start from the beginning because you're the the there's a oh. psychic attack. There's a psychic okay. attack. We keep cutting off. We didn't hear none of that story. Oh, okay. All right, sorry. All right, so there was this guy that I barely started talking to guys that I met on Grindr. And he came over. So, like, uh, next thing you know, like, he, like, the lights were off, but we're getting into it. And he was, like, you know, we, I was giving him head. And then he was, like, pushing real hard, hard, hard. And then next thing you know, like, I just started feeling, like, moisture, like, on me. I was, like, feeling, like, wet. I was, like, what the hell? I was, like, what's going on? Like, what the fuck? And after that, next thing you know, like, I turned on the light, and there was, like, blood everywhere. There was blood all over my my clothes, like blood all over my bed, and I was like, I was like, what the fuck happened? The what guy, I guess, the guy, I guess, he has his turtle never been pulled back, and oh, it ripped. No! <laughs> Are you telling me? And, you and I didn't know. I didn't know what to do. I I thought I I thought I had cut him with my teeth or something. I don't know what happened, but I was like, <gasps> did I did did I was something sharp like cut his veins or what happened? Like what's going on? And yeah, that's what happened. So and I and I am so I'm so traumatized about that day. That guy's like, you know what? Hey, want to hang out again? And I'm like, ah, um, <laughs> happened to me. To, I did it to someone too. And you did? Like, yeah. But how'd you I'm get like, over it? I'm scared no, <laughs> to ever I, go down there again. <laughs> those work because I don't have one of those. But he said yeah. he he's just continued wanting to go. But I was so shook. Oh, I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. He wanted to keep going. I was like, I have blood everywhere. I have blood everywhere. I don't. I don't know how to feel right now. Like I'm not really into it. Like. I, and yeah, so <laughs> so that's why I called in. I was all like, I was all like, you were going in and it started bleeding, and you didn't notice, girl. Yes, I did. I started taste. I saw. I was like, that's an interesting taste. Yeah. Like, what the fuck? I was all like, uh, I was like, I was like, oh well. I was all like, um. So that's why I stopped and I turned on the light. That's why I did that. <laughs> Cause I was like, why the fuck is like I I know he's not peeing in my mouth. He better not be fucking peeing in my mouth. <laughs> and after that, next thing you know, it was I wish it was pee. Actually, no, away from us. So that's what I'm saying. Like it was like that. It traumatized me, and I don't know how to get over it. So that's why I was all like, maybe like this could be considered like attempted murder. Cause I'm, <laughs> but how'd you get over it, Joella? He just started. He just got dressed, and he no. Out. He wanted to keep going. He wanted oh, to keep going. Okay. He was all like, he was like, oh, he's like, uh, what's wrong? And I'm like, what's wrong? I was like, uh, it looks like I fucking ah! like attempted to kill you in here. Like I didn't know what to say. I was like, uh. I was like, I and I had literally blood everywhere, and I was all like, "Oh my god!" And I was like, I don't know what to say. I was like, "You gotta go." I was like, "I gotta take a shower. I gotta call the police, probably." I was like, "I don't, I don't know what I gotta do." 
<laughs> but that's what I was like, you know, I was like, this that was a scary, like scary fucking <laughs> thing to me. Yeah, so that's wow. why I was like, that that can go underneath the ghost stories and murders. So I was like, probably. But I wanted advice since Joella, you said you've been through that. How did you get over ever? I going down on someone again. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm I'm scared that I might burst the next I one listen, too. Listen to me, Army. She didn't huh. get over it. Look at her. She didn't get over it. I'm still can't even look at her. <laughs> but yeah, but that's what it's it's it was scary. So I just wanted to tell you that scary little story and but yeah, he wanted to keep talking to me. He was actually like pretty sad for a while. He was like, he's like, man, he's like, I, you're like the only guy that I, I wanted to talk to on the grinder and everyone else is like flaking on me. I was like, I can't do it again. Like, I don't know. I, I was like, I don't even know if you're practicing pushing it back still. Like, what happens if it rips again? Like, I don't want that. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> But like for me now, I'm scared. I now I'm scared. Let me listen. You really <laughs> scared us. You terrified us. That was a horrible <laughs> story. Um, and I, I'm glad you survived. I'm glad you pushed through. Everyone, make some noise for Miss Army Couture. She really shook me. That was a terrible, terrifying story. Okay, um, but I love you, Luscious. I love you, Luscious. I love you, Joella. Like honestly, like. You guys have got me through a lot of shit. Like for real, even through that, I was like, you know what? This is a gig I gotta get through. And <laughs> but you guys really inspire me, and you guys are really doing a lot on there. Like, you know, I come on here to get happy, and you guys make me happy. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you for coming on here, my love. Have Hi, chat. Miss Army Couture. Miss Army Couture is in the house. This is, this is shook by the paranormal, not shook by the foreskin. Right. Ghost stories, right? Whenever uh, we do, whenever we do, shook by the foreskin. That's when you call in and tell us. <laughs> that story. Once, once we cancel shook by the paranormal and we do shook by, <laughs> shook by the foreskin, that's when you call in and tell us that story, bitch. It, 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 right now is a time to call in when if you if if you ever been, if you've ever seen a bobbing head. If you've, if you've ever seen a little duende, honey, if, the, if, the, if your bed has ever levitated and perpetrated, honey, don't, don't, this is not the time to call us and talk to us about, about the foreskin. The, wait for Shook by the foreskin. <laughs> okay, let's bring in this next girl. Oh my God. Shalom, shalom. Hello. Can you hear me? Uh -huh. Hi. Oh, hi, baby. How old are you? What's your name and where are you calling from, honey? My name is Omar. Can you hear me okay? Sorry. We can hear oh. you. We okay, perfect. I am 38. Y te llamo de San Diego. <gasps> oh, San Diego. Yes, okay. Yes, yes. Mr. I, Omar, I'm trying to get my webcam us? working, but it's not. So I just put my picture here. But You know what? Are you, ladies doing? you have a beautiful, a beautiful voice. We're doing Thank fabulous. You. Can you tell us? about a time when you were shook to the core by the uh, paranormal. Okay, and I know a lot of them are not believable, but I'll tell you this, I wouldn't tell this story unless it was like legit, right? Oh. So I'm not very uh, spiritual, not very religious. I do believe in something. I just don't know what it is, but um, oh. whatever I went, when I went, went through this, it was with my brother, so he could have testified to this. And uh, <laughs> this actually happened in the home that I'm in right now. We're visiting my mother. So uh, I'll try to keep it short, but long time ago when I was in my in high school and my brother's three years younger than me, my parents, they went to Tijuana. They went to uh, a wedding. Right. Uh -huh. And so they were like, oh, you guys stay home. Just, you know, take care of each other. And so we were going to stay home, watch movies. And my sister was out with her friends. And so that's it. So this was early 2000. So I had a computer. We were playing with programs just to record your voice and make your voice higher or lower, you know, like a mouse or anything. Oh. Basically, I was playing with the audio and I was recording and I said, testing, testing, hello, hello, playing back, right? And then I heard my voice. My brother came in. He was sitting behind me. We're making weird noises, just being stupid. So then I tried it again and then I played it back and I didn't hear anything. And I was <laughs> like, oh, the volume said, it, said it, it doesn't work anymore. It's weird. 
And so I tried it again. And this is in like, uh, we're in a two-story house. It's in the room in the back. There's no windows in that room. It's just one door that's like all across the room, right? So there's nothing behind us, nothing. Pretty much we're like, okay, let's try it again. I'm sitting down. My brother's standing right behind me. And he has his, his hand on my, my shoulder. And we're trying to make it work. So I, I try it again. I go, hello, hello. And I hit playback. And I hear myself finally. I'm like, oh, it works. And I'm like, hello, hello. And then I, I swear to you, I had to increase the volume. I heard like a faint woman's voice in the recording saying, no. hello. Yes. No. And I, as I'm telling you my, this story, because I haven't told this story in like 20 years. As I'm telling you this story, it's like freaking me out because <laughs> it's like I'm in the same house. And then as soon as we were like, what, what is this? So I turned the volume up and I hit play again. It was recording and it was like my voice louder. Hello. Hello. I swear to you. It felt like the voice was right behind us, like <gasps> in the air. La voz, la pura voz. Oh, and as soon as we heard it, as soon as we heard it, it wasn't from the computer, it was from behind us. So as soon as we heard that, since my, my brother's hand was on my shoulders, his nails dug into my shoulder, like <gasps> the miedo, the miedo. Oh my God. And I oh, felt him like his long ass nails were <laughs> in my shoulder. Terrifying, and I was like, oh "My God, you need to tell him to cut his nails, honey." Oh my God, no, see, sí, no, pues ya después. No, but I was terrified. I was like, in my head, I was like, "Fuck, fuck, 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 fuck." Oh, sorry, can I curse? Sorry. <laughs> bueno, <laughs> and so my brother was like, "Bro, bro, bro." He said that he felt someone like breathing on his neck. I didn't feel that, but he said he felt that. So immediately, I was like, "Okay, Mike, bro, on the count of three, run." So, long story short, we ran out the door. We ran upstairs. My brother started crying. I was freaking out. Okay, my parents got home. We were freaking out. We told my mom. My dad was like, nah, I, can't, can't, no pasa nada. I go to sleep, right? My dad. My mom, when we told her the story, you would assume a Mexican uh, mother would just be like, ah, yeah, no pasa nada. She saw us and she's like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, why? What the hell? What happened? So we just moved into that house like two weeks before. That was like, we just moved into this house. It was a brand new house. I found out a year after that happened that the land that they built all of our homes on, was on it used to be a farm and i did some digging and there's graveyards <gasps> graveyards where oh, these cool. houses the, these houses are and then mom said i'm so sorry i forgot to get the padre que, que bendiga la casa like you know to uh, the christian the house yeah yeah and she didn't she believed us she's like i'm so sorry and because i guess she said we're very sensitive she's oh. like they come for the ones that are very sensitive to this stuff and so to that day, till that day, I, when I hear people just say, "I know that that doesn't believe in, I don't believe in that stuff," I'm like, "No, that exists, and you don't want that to happen to you, like real life." And then when it happens, it's like, "Oh, so, yeah." And so, did, did that, what did did the did this lady? Did she say anything else other than say hello to you? She just said hello, but it didn't sound like a friendly hello. It sounded like like you're in my space. Hello. So, Hello. yeah, it sounded like she was she was pissed. Hello. She was pissed. And oh, and I'll I'll add this, okay? That this was like twenty. We moved in this house, or my mom, my parents moved into this house, like I want to say twenty years ago or so. Since then, the original owners in the block, because it was just like two blocks of houses, six people. I don't know if it's too much. They they've killed themselves in their homes. <gasps> no. No. Yes. Yes. And there's just a lot of death on this street, but they're still here. We're still here. So. Well, you know what? If I, when I die and someone comes into my room, I'm going to say, Shello. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to know it was me. Or if it was you, I would have stayed. <laughs> They're gonna know. Recording, so I can uh, equalize it and boost it and try to get that. Oh, uh, that's right, Omar. Do you still have the recording? Absolutely not. I I believe Omar, in you in, in... The record. You should have called the paranormal paratroopers. Ghost no. adventure. It was Engines. This was like a twenty-year-old computer. I I wouldn't even know how to find that. This is a long time ago. <laughs> but. Oh, yeah, and trust me, I was very like, okay, there's this, there's has to be a solution or a reason behind this. There's no re way there is a ghost or you know, but 
uh, now as grown adults, my brother and I, we are with family or friends, and they want to do the whole tell a ghost story thing. We look at each oh other. Oh my God, Chavala. Chavala, wake up. I'm already back. Well, I'm boring you. No, no. You, you just, <laughs> even, she's burn. having a panic attack. She's having a panic attack. I don't know. It's because she's no. waiting for the trade. No, Chavala, no. <laughs> no, Chavala. Did we get 500 likes on the video? Chavala's about Everyone to hit eat. like. Everyone, Everyone click like. She's, she's, she's going to go get some trade. This woman is going to go Good for get her. some trade. Now, Omar, can I ask you, are you homosexual, heterosexual, or do you not want to share? Uh, homosexual. <gasps> oh. Yes. Oh, C -C -C. my God. And where did you Oh, you're in San Diego? San Diego. Yes, yes. So. Oh, my God. Are you single? Are you married? Do you have a boyfriend? Uh, boyfriend? I've been single for a while, but I, no. I'm dating, I guess. Like, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to know people but it's very difficult because uh i guess i'm in my stage of my life where i don't i need something serious and a lot of the yeah a lot of the guys i meet they're not looking for they're just trying to hook up they're they trying to want to look up pump it down. And, yes so they just you know want the d and all right next so i have once okay tell me about the last time you went on a date was it was it scary well, yes. Once I found out that they didn't have a job, that was pretty scary. Oh my god, no. Yes. <laughs> did you have, did you take them on a date like to a restaurant? Did you have to pay for the food? No, it, yeah, of course. Like I mean, I when I initiate the the date or when I meet them on through mutual friends or Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um if I I feel like if you invite the person, you should pay. Or if they want to do split half and half, that's fine. But if you initiate it, I think you should pay. That's just for me, though. But oh, work. Okay, Miss Omar. Well, thank you, Miss Omar, for surviving and being here with us and calling in. Yes. We need to, we need to bring you on Drag Me to Love. You need to come on Thursday. That, for Drag that's that's actually what I was trying to look into. But I'll be honest, I'll, I'm a new viewer. But lately, with your videos and your your lives. I'm sure everyone could agree they are amazing. And that one phone call you had with that person that was asleep, Miss Amethyst, I think that's what the person's name. They were no, sleeping. Well, no, Amethyst was the man who, who who wanted to go on a date with Joella and with me and and with all the, the one girls. that has like five made up made up businesses. Yes. 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 No. The the mm. one the one who called, that was a uh, Kevin Prodigy was the one. Kevin. Miss Kevin. That was the funniest thing I've ever heard in my life. I'll just have to say that. Well, Omar, if you're not doing anything on Thursday, you should come on Drive Me to Love. We'd love to see you come in, and, and we'll find you some trade. Okay. I mean, I'm sorry. We'll find you some love. So, something more than that, yes. <laughs> yes. We'll find you something more. Thank you, Omar, for calling in, mi amor. Thank you, Lush. Love you so much. Love you so much, baby. Oh, Omar sounds like such a sweetie. Let's, Miss Sparkle Melon, are you there, Sparkle Melon? Can I see you, Sparkle Melon? Did you, did you, let me see. Let's try to see if we can bring in Sparkle. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, Miss Sparkle. Oh my God, yay. Sorry about the testicle I can difficulties. I hear you so much clearer now. Yeah, I'm on my phone now. So we were going oh, through the gigs work, with my computer. Miss Sparkle, tell me about a time that you were shook to the core. Oh my God. I have a couple ghost stories, but um, the craziest is probably when I saw my ex's dead dad on his death anniversary. But I didn't know it was his death anniversary or even that this was my ex's dead dad. Um, so like, it's like maybe 2015, 16. It's like a while ago. But um, I was really into like the crystal healing, like doing the burning the Palo Santo, you know, giving people like a little spa experience. So I was doing that for my boyfriend at the time we like lived together this is in brooklyn and one of my best friends was with me too which is like it's just crazy that i have that confirmation from her because it's so easy to like gaslight yourself with these kind of like paranormal experiences but so anyways i'm i'm definitely like medically medicated too just want to like disclose you know she definitely was like rooting and tooting but um so i was like going through the spa experience and it like i don't my experience with like the spiritual or paranormal is it's not like overlaid in physical it's maybe more like in my mind's eye or something so in my mind's eye i saw this like 
black figure, very smoky and ominous looking at my now ex's feet. And I was, I remember like at the time I was very like sassy, like fearless, like light warrior, whatever. I was like, you need to leave, like get out of here. It was just like really like horrible energy. And at the oh. end, I remember telling my ex about it and he got mad at me. And I was like, I just did you like a huge favor. And like, I was super like chill about it. And it was like kind of weird, but like whatever. And then fast forward two weeks, he tells me that the reason he got upset about it and it took him a while to tell me is because he got so spooked out because that was the day his dad had died, um, like the anniversary of it. And so oh I'm God. assuming that was his dead dad at his feet and like I knowing a little bit of like the context to Max's dad it definitely makes sense that he would like appear as like a ominous draining figure at the feet as a, as a, like, very... an evil, like an evil negative energy and ne negative source yeah well and it was even spooky that like it came to me after I was using like sage and like Paul you know like smokes that kind of like eject negative energy so it was it was definitely like I, I think about that often it's kind of weird it, it's it's weird that sometimes you know I well I can, I can remember a couple years ago I don't remember why I don't remember why but I remember I was in the hospital and I think it was like for a proceed something like a routine procedure or something um and I I remember I got put under and I don't remember the details, but I remember that I would I saw an old man mm -hmm. sitting at the foot, not on my bed, at the foot of the bed, but on the floor. And I kept I kept seeing this old man. And I remember I was medicated <laughs> and my mom, my mom remembers that I would I would tell her, you don't see that old man there. And she would be like, No, I don't see anybody there. Oh my God. And, um, but are we talking like hospital medication or like Mother Earth for? No, no, no. I was on hospital. I was on okay, hospital. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know what it is? I think I remember now. I, I. Okay, this is this is what happened. I had fallen down. This is years ago. I had fallen down. Um, I was I was running and I fell down some stairs, and so then I got a bruise, and the bruise, it kind of like it never really went away. Like I just, I had a bruise on the side of my, almost like on my butt, but off to the side. And so then I had this little, like, it's almost like you could see that there was like a little bit of fluid there. So I ended up having surgery to remove the fluid and they had to oh, actually- Like a like, hematoma or something like yeah, that? Yeah, it was literally like, they have a specific name for it. It's, yeah, essentially it's like, a, it's like a bruise that it just didn't, for some reason, like, especially when- when people are big and tall, if you get bruises, sometimes they don't subside because of how big your body is. And, yeah. and by big, I mean as in like tall. And so I um, I remember my doctor was like, we're going to have to, I have to open it a little bit, but I have to put you under because I have to drain it and blah, 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 blah. And um, when I, when I was, I was in the medication, I remember seeing that little old man and he, I could tell, I remember in my, in my, in my third eye, my, in my senses that I, I remember thinking this man is, he's dead. He's definitely someone who has passed on, mm. someone who, who's here, not related to me in any way, not a family member or anything like that. Someone who was just there in the hospital who just, I was, I happened to be able to see him and I would tell my mom about him. I would, I, and my mom till this day, she never lets it go. She always asks me about this old man. She's like, you remember the old man that you would see and all this thing. And, I, but I remember that there was, he was definitely not a friendly person, but also at the mm. same time, he was also, he was just kind of like my energy that I understood was, he was just in my room, like being nosy, because he wasn't really there. <laughs> I he mean, wasn't so... really there to do harm to me, but he also was not friendly to me. He was just there. He was watching me, um, and I don't know. I don't know if it was like maybe he thought I'm here watching this person to see if this person's gonna pass. Like that's his. And it's weird how in our intuition, oh my god, yeah, we can, we can, that's so scary. We pick up all these things. 
Because I remember like in my mind, that's what I felt from this man. And I and I'm literally I'm picturing him and I can see him clearly this old, old, skinny, balding, like old man. He looked a little like, you know, like I don't know, he died of of like he was just old and going through it. And something tells me he was lonely too. And but he was just there being nosy in my room. And I remember <laughs> seeing him uh while I was there. I think I was there for like a day or two, like while I was recovering and stuff. And um it's weird how you can sense, even though they don't sometimes I I've never been spoken to. They don't I've never been had a moment where they speak to me, but I could still I could feel out what why he was there, what he was doing, you know. I mean, if a ghost is sticking around, I feel like they're probably, like, a little messy looking for drama. So it makes sense that it's, like, going to places that it could maybe, like, perpetuate whatever, like, emotion it's stuck on. Or maybe that's, like, a that, what you saw was, like, a being that, like, feeds on the fear of death or fear in general or, like, who knows? You know, there's so many possibilities. Uh... <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Well, Miss Sparkle Melon, oh, I'm so glad you called in today. I'm glad you called in and you shared your story. Thank Everybody, you for having me. Come noise and give a round of applause to Miss Sparkle Melon. We love having Miss Sparkle on the channel. And um, you need to call in again, honey, whenever you want. The invitation is always open. Oh, thank you, sweetie. Thank you, mi amor. <laughs> yeah, I have to say, um, there's a there was a girl on here. Her name is Barbie. She's Barbie from the <laughs> Barbie Mattel. She's in the chat. Um, I removed her from the chat because she keeps commenting over and over. Oh, this is boring. I'm bored. I'm bored of this topic. Bitch, don't watch today. This episode it's called Shook by the Paranormal. We are taking calls for people who want to watch and listen to these kind of stories. We're not, not every day is going to be about trade. Not every day. We have different days for different shows, for different topics, for different stories. I don't need to, it, it distracts me when I keep seeing over and over that Barbie keeps saying, oh, this is boring. This is boring. What do you want? You want a trophy? Do you want an award for me? What do you want, baby? At the end of the day, if you're not, if you're, if you're just coming on here to uh, be a nuisance and annoy me, I'm going to block your ass. Because guess what? I am the ultimate moderator on the channel, bitch. So do not come on here and constantly uh, be negative and bitter. I, if, you're in my, if you're in my chat, I would appreciate the support. Because at the end of the day, today is a different kind of show. Today is about topics, about the paranormal. If, if, you, if it's boring you, get out of the show, get out of the chat, get out of my eyes, get away from my sight, Miss Barbie. How about that? Because you know what? You might be bored, but there's 500 other people who are watching the show who are living their life. Trust and believe. Let me get, you know what? Well, I do that. I have I have more people on the line, but I'm gonna do some shout outs because I haven't done it. Shout outs. Let me do let me do some shout outs for the girls. Oh my god, I time her out and then she comes back. Oh, I got timed out because I said it was boring. Yes, bitch, I timed you out, but guess what? Now you got banned and blocked and hidden, honey. Never to be seen again. Shout out to Miss Grimace. We have Miss Grimace in the house. She said I was laying. On Joe's chest, Lush and Joella next. <laughs> oh, oh my God! Do not think that I don't read the chat because as I'm listening, I'm also reading the chat over here. And let me tell you, if you're being shady and if you're being annoying, just know that I'm also watching, and I will block you the house if I have to. The girls, they the girls start to get very. Uh, they start to feel some kind of where they think they can shred the doll. You're gonna shred. You can shred everybody. But you're not gonna shred me. You can shed ever shred everybody, bitch. But you're not going to shred me. <laughs> Shout out to Miss the Homie Joe, honey. We have the Homie Joe. Said thank you for having me. Oh. Joe, thank you for coming in, Miss Joe. 
Miss Joe's coming in. Let me find some of the girls who I need to give some shout outs to, honey, because we want to give the girls some shout outs. Let me give the girls some shout outs. Honey, if you don't like the topic of the day, tune out. Come back tomorrow. Shout out to Miss Denison 52. Miss Denison 52. She said, may the spirit of Miss Debbie Alanis protect us all. Nathan Crossing said, can I come on and say hi? You can say hi in the chat, baby. But unless you have a, uh, a shook by the paranormal story, today's not the day. Today is not the day, sweetie. There are days, uh, when is it? We, we're going to have, I think that's on Wednesdays, we have an episode called Next Caller, and we bring in people who want to come call in and ask us a question. Wait for Next Caller, baby. On that day, you can call in if you have a, if you have a question or you want a kiki. Shout out to Miss Amanda. We have Miss Amanda in the house. She said, the night my best friend died, I felt a physical body in the middle of the night next to me, holding me tight. He died at 3 a.m., and this was at 5. Miss Amanda, that was your friend. That was your friend. That was your friend giving you a hug. I was watching Grey's Anatomy the other day. You guys know I'm I'm I, I'm re-watching the show. I'm on season three, like episode 17, 18 or something. And there was a moment where Izzy walked. She was in the hall, and she was walking. And Danny Duquette, his ghost, was also walking in that same hall. And when they met each other, they touched Izzy was like, oh, she she knew. She could feel that he was right next to her. Izzy could not see him. She could not touch him. But she could she could sense and she could feel that Denny was right there. And then Denny Duquette was also on the other side. He, he couldn't see her. He couldn't touch her, couldn't smell her, taste her. But he he knew that Izzy was there. That was a that was a really beautiful moment. Uh, you know what? I've been crying a lot watching television. I've been watching Grey's Anatomy, and every episode has me just in tears. Such a good show. I had I I had, you know, time passes. The show I used to watch that show. I was a super fan. I I remember being so obsessed with the first couple of seasons, um, and it held it holds up the writing, the acting. Everything that's going on on Grey's Anatomy, especially I can say season one, season two, and season three, there are moments in season three at the end that kind of take me out because it's starting to jump the shark. But when I tell you season one and season two of Grey's Anatomy, please, I implore you, everyone watching right now, if you have never seen Grey's Anatomy, do yourself a favor tonight. If you have an opportunity or tomorrow, please start watching Grey's Anatomy. Start with season one. And I promise you, you will be shook. By the time you finish season two of Grey's Anatomy, that show, season one and season two of Grey's Anatomy, go, will go down as some of the best moments of t in television history. That show is so good. It's just, it's delicious. It's just so good. It's just, Miss Shonda Rhimes. She was really in her pocket. She was feeling her fantasy. Shout out to Miss Tiffany Blossoms, honey. We have Miss Tiffany Blossoms. And she said, Barbie made the cash app. I bet. <laughs> Shout out to Miss Amanda. We have Miss Amanda, honey. She says, I love you. Tell them, baby. We have Miss Amanda in the house. We also have, let me give a shout out to Miss D. Gonzalez, 511. We have Miss D. Gonzalez, 511. She says, go in and let that Barbie have. Honey, Bar listen, I don't, I watch the show and, and this is hard to do, you guys. To do a live show, it's difficult. Like I'm focused, I'm trying to entertain. There's a lot of moving parts. It's live. There's no room for mistakes. There's no room for awkwardness. There's no room for, you know, people like starting, trying to throw me off. It takes a lot. I come in here, I'm focused, and I'm like, okay, we, I have to keep the ball moving. I'm the host of the show, so I have to keep the ball moving. I have to keep everything in balance. It's like a balancing act. And for me to see sh comments like that, they're not helpful. They're not constructive. They make me to start question myself. And, and at the end of the day, today is Sunday night. It's The episode is called Shook by the Paranormal. It's a different vibe. We're taking calls from people who are calling in and they're being vulnerable. They're sharing their stories 
we're going to have fun, but we also need to be respectful. And for me to constantly see Barbie over and over and over and over saying, this is boring, this is boring, this is boring. Literally, like, every 30 seconds, this is boring. Bitch, what do you want? Do you want a medal? Do you, this is the show. What do you want me to do? Get out of my face. Out of my face. Out of my face. Out of my face. Okay, let's bring in. Let me give a shout out to Miss Tennyson 52. Miss Tennyson 52. Shout out to Miss Tennyson. She says, I am sending you all the positive energy, Lush. Thanks for the amazing content. We really appreciate the love and creativity you and Joella share with us, dolls. Send these women some love on IG. Gracias, mi amor, Miss Tennyson 52. I love you. I live for that, honey. Let me tell you, I need the support. I don't need the shade. Shout out. Let's bring in the next victim. Hello. Hello. Oh, my God, Miss Marty McFly. How <laughs> old are you, baby? And where are you calling from? I'm 37 from Oklahoma City. <gasps> I'm so happy to be on your show. I love you so much. Oh, thank you, Miss Marty. Now, Miss Marty, tell us. Take us back and tell us of that moment when you were shook to the core. Right, this, the this, is, funny. this is a legitimate story that I really wanted to go like on a real TV show to tell my story because this really happened to me and it scared the shit out of me. And I had to, I had to get an exorcism too afterwards. No. For real. No. Yes. So no. it all started, I was being a bad boy a couple years ago doing really, really hard drugs, really hard drugs. Oh. And um, I was doing it so much that I felt so empty inside, like completely. I It was the most ugliest feeling ever. And doing those hard drugs um, really opened doors, evil doors, you know. It invited so, the evil forces in. Yes. So I was at my apartment. It all started in my apartment. And my apartment was really nice. It was huge. It had a big bedroom. It had this really long bathroom. And I started hearing noises. Uh, it started like for about two months. I started hearing no noises in the restroom. Mm -hmm. And I would go in the restroom. I didn't see anything. So I put one of the virgin we can, uh, virgin candles in there, you know, at night. Mm -hmm. So I started to do that. And then I also felt somebody poking me in the back when I would sleep in my bed. No. Yes. And I thought it was in Oklahoma. I thought it was an earthquake. And I was like, that ain't no damn. We don't have no earthquakes in Oklahoma. But I always felt somebody poking me in my back while I would sleep. So I'd, I would get mad. And so I'd have to reposition myself and stuff like that. So that kept on going. So I was coming off a really bad high. I was not hallucinating. I was in myself. I, had, I, I was sane and everything like that one night. And I started to hear the noise again. In the restroom, so but, I. But, turned. But what was the noise like? What, what, what was the noise I, that? You it was just that? like a moving noise or like a rattling noise. It was like that. It was like a rattling noise, oh. and so I said, "What the fuck is that?" So I turned on all the lights. I turned on all the lights, and so I go into my bedroom and I see in the corner of my eye there was a side mirror in my restroom. This like shadow go really fast. I said, what the fuck was that? So I go into, I go out of my um, room and there was nobody there. I said, what was that? That was weird. It's kind of mm. scared me. I said, what the fuck was that? It was like a shadow. So I go back into my room. I look where my restroom is and there he was. It was this, it was probably about six foot tall. It yeah. had on a white sheet with yeah. black eyes and no feet staring at me in my restroom where the door was at. Ooh, I just and got I got scared. I said, who the fuck is in my in my apartment? I said, who the fuck is this? Who got in my apartment? It scared the shit out of me. So I go and I, I, I like go and get my clothes and put my clothes on. I said, I'm gonna get the fuck out of here. I'm going to my mom's house. When I'm about to leave my room, I see him. He's opening a door. He opens a door with his hand and all these demons rush out. I, oh, all, these, all these demons rush out. And I said, oh my God, let me try to cast them out. 
So I said, in Jesus' name, and I cast still, and they're laughing at me. I hear them in my head. They're laughing at me. They said, that doesn't work here. You don't have the Holy Spirit in you. That don't, that don't work with us. I said, let me get the fuck out of here. Miss Mar- Miss Marty. Yes. Where what did this what did these demons look like? How did you know they were demons? Because I felt this like really bad hatred towards towards me from them. And I thought it was ghosts, but there were demons. I had done research after all this happened, and that there are a head demon with all these little demons that are that are uh uh like his pals or whatever. He's over these little demons. I had read read about it afterwards, what happened to me. Have you ever tried drawing them? Or like, do you remember what they look like? Can you describe what they look like physically? They were all different. The one that I can describe to you the most, the head demon, the ghost one, is if you've ever seen Beetlejuice, where they're trying to scare the uh, the people out of the house and then they put those sheets over them. It was like that. That, that, was, the, that was the head demon. <laughs> That was how he loved it. Telling me this demon was was pretending to be a ghost with a sheet. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Get the shit out of me, Lush. Did he did he cut like did he cut little eyes in, in the <laughs> No, it was just black eyes like this. It was just black with no feet. Oh my so anyways, I get out of my apartment. I said, I'm going to my mom's house. I'm going to my mom's house. I said, let me get my car. They won't follow me. They won't follow me in my car. They're there. No. And then? They're there. Huh? What do you mean? They followed you to the car? Mm-hmm. And I turn on my car, and I see all these demon faces. Like, one has, like, I just remember seeing these red eyes. There was a small one with red eyes. There was another one. There was there was a lot of them in my car. And I start driving. I'm there on the highway, and my eyes go blank. They cover my eyes. <laughs> I can't see where I'm driving. I see this black figure in my passenger seat come up and go into my body. No. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it, this is scary. Okay, Marty McFly, I have to ask, is there any possibility that you were just tripping, girl? No, no. I told you I was coming up a high and I was, I had eaten, I had drank water. I was not hallucinating at all. Let's this is legit. I'm going to tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. And, and, and this is not, you know, it's no okay. shade, never, mm-hmm. reading, never coming from a place of reading. But I had this trade one time, and um, this was a while back. And I remember he said, Can I smoke? And I said, Not in here. And I, I don't remember where I was, but I was at a hotel room. And he said, Okay, I'm going to go outside to smoke. He steps outside my house, outside the hotel, and he starts smoking. Honey, he was not smoking cigarettes. Let me tell you. Okay. And I was shook. And I was shook. And I was like, Oh, honey, I said, You can't be doing that around here. And he said, oh, okay, it's okay, sorry, you know, and he put it away. He walked back in the room. I kid you not, two seconds later, he went from, um, he was like, he turned into a completely different person. And then he, his energy completely shifted. Mm-hmm. And I could feel like this paranoia, like this, it just, he just got real dark, real quiet. He sat at the foot of the bed. Shit, and already was like, some high shit. Yeah, and, I, and in my mind, I was like, okay, it's about to hit the fan. I'm going to have to ask him to leave. And then I said, sweetie, I think, you know what? I'm going to have to call it a night. I think you got to go. You got to punch. Yeah. And then, and then he, he just sat there. He didn't even listen to me. He didn't say, he just sat there. And I was, I was like, oh my God. In my mind, I started planning and I'm like, okay, what am I going to do if this man goes crazy on me? Cause something, he immediately turned. Well, girl, he looks over at me and he tells me and he straight to my face. He says, you don't see that? And I said, no. Oh, shit. He was hallucinating. Yeah, he said, I said, no, see what? And he said, and then he kept going, he kept going like this. And I said, what are you doing? What's happening? He said, oh, no, nothing. He said, I'm just, I'm covered in spiders. You don't see them? Oh, Lord. And I, and I said, no, sweetie, there's there's no spiders here. And then he just like got up and he was like shaking and, and he's like, I'm covered in spiders. He kept like and I was like, sweetie, I started to try to calm him down. I said, sweetie, you need to calm down. Whatever you How did smoke. you get rid of him? Well, I mean, I told him, I, I, I literally, I got up and I said, sweetie, you need to calm down. I said, whatever you're going through, whatever, whatever you smoke, it's got you on a trip. But I just want you, I want to bring you back to the earth 
you're tripping, baby. You, there are no spiders here. And not a good trip either. And he said, you don't, you can't even tell, but you're covered in spiders too. And I'm like, sweetie, I'm not covered in nothing, baby. I'm not, <laughs> honey, you're, honey, you're, you're, you're obviously, you're seeing something that is not there. So I walked him out. I said, honey, you got to go call somebody, do something, but you got to punch. Uh, and he left, but I was just like, oh no, I got scared. I was like, I, you just don't know how, you know, yeah yourself in those positions unfortunately sometimes you don't know how people are going to react because they can go on a trip on a trip that is not of this world that's why I, I i would love to go on a show and tell about my experience but that's the main reason well they they would think that me doing drugs me coming off a of high that it was just hallucinations this is not true this was legit demon i haven't even got to an exorcism part that i had to have Okay, so tell me, you get in the car, you're driving, the, the demon puts his hands around your eyes, and yes. you can't see, so then what happens? You keep driving? I keep driving. I don't even know where I'm driving. I'm trying to get to my mom's house to for her to protect me. She's a Southern Baptist woman, you know, Christian woman, for her to help me. And I can't see. For some reason, I, I get into, I pull up into a gas station. I don't even know how I got to the gas station. I go to the lady. This is probably about three o'clock in the morning. I go to this black lady, the, the clerk there. I said, please help me. Please help me. You know, I, I need help. I was going crazy. And so a policeman comes. He takes me to the hospital. I'm literally almost in shackles. They have to like pin me down because I'm going crazy seeing these demons. By that time, they're still there, but they're not present anymore in my vision. Mm. And they take me. It's out there for like an hour or two in the hospital. They take me to the crazy house, the mm. nut house. Yes. And, and this is. What did you tell them? Did you tell them that the, that the and were the demons? During this whole thing, were the demons still following you around, hanging out? I haven't. I hadn't seen them uh, yet. Maybe because I was with humans or whatever, like that. Other people, they hadn't shown themselves. So I get into the nut house. They do an evaluation and stuff like that. It's still nighttime at that time. It's still nighttime. I go into my. It's like a cell kind of thing, but they have the doors open. Side note: I absolutely loved it in the crazy house. Anyways, I loved it in there. <laughs> I absolutely loved why it. In you, there. Why did you love it, Marty? Did you feel safe there? I think I felt safe. And it was like there was other crazy people in there. And we did group therapy about five times. We did, get, we did games. I don't know what that says about me, but I absolutely loved it there in the crazy house. <gasps> did you, <laughs> That's sad to say, but I did. Did you, did you, find, did you find love in, 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 in your, when you were in, in there? In no, the but... You know, I always was like a closeted gay. And for some reason, I came out telling people that I was gay there. And it just felt like home there. For some reason, I came out gay there in the crazy house. <laughs> okay. well, you, know, you, felt, you know, it's 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 funny you say that. But, you know, you felt safe there. You felt like you were being taken care of. And, and you weren't seeing the ghosts, girl. You weren't seeing no, the No, no, it was, it was so... Okay, let me get to it. So I go into, I get my evaluation done. It's still nighttime. I'm with my my person. He's sleeping. It all starts happening again. They all start coming Say back. Say that again. They all start coming back. At, at when you were in interred. When I was in the crazy house with my roommate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I'm there. It's still nighttime. I can't sleep. And they start coming. They start coming at me again. But this time, I'm not scared. I'm not scared of them. And the ghost one, the main demon, he comes. He's still on his white sheet. He comes right at me. And I'm, like, trying to push him away. I feel all this electricity in him. All this elect electricity that I'm trying to push him. I feel all this electricity in him. Mm -hmm. And then I see, like, in the wall, I see, like, the statue of of Satan in his throne. I see all this shit. This shit is crazy. And so that keeps on happening. The next morning, the morning, I call my mother. I tell her what's happening to me. And she, on the phone, cast these demons out, like, to get away from me. Oh. And about, I'm going to say about 90% of them left. And there are still a few still with me. I was there in the crazy house for probably a week and a half. And they were torturing me in there. They would like 
pinch me. They would uh, poke my nose. They no. would, uh, yes, they were doing like pull my hair. They were still doing these things. And I was not on drugs at that time. And they were doing this stuff to me. They were torturing me. Yes. Oh my God, they sound like me, little little kids, bullies at the schoolyard. Yes, it was it was a trip. So I finally get out of the crazy house. And so shady. I, the demons are so shady. <laughs> yeah. Are they saying stuff in the chat? <laughs> oh my god! Okay, so then tell me about this exorcism, the exorcism of Lilac Rose. What happened? So I uh, I go to my family. I tell them what happened. They're really big Christians. They tell me that I needed to go to a deliverance ministry to help me to cast out spirits and stuff like that and demons. So I go to this deliverance ministry and it was, it was so, I can't describe the feeling of God and heaven in there. Mm -hmm. It goes and there's this huge prayer with other people there. We do this huge prayer. He, the preacher tells all of the all angels to come with, with us and let God's spirit come in there. Then we get paired up individually with somebody. So I go with this man to the back of the room, excuse yeah. me, and I tell him my story and I tell him all what happened. So he, to take out spirits, it's like a kind of a coughing noise or like a burp or like, it's not like a fart, but like, it's like coming out of you inside you when he takes these things out. That's what he said would happen. And I said, okay, so it's not a trance. We do this prayer and he's telling me to say these words and I'm saying these words and stuff like that. And I feel these things coming out of me. And he goes, we, we got to go deeper. He goes, I got to, I got to really take these demons out of you. So I go into like a trance. It's not me anymore. And he tells me, what is your name demon? And the demon didn't want to say his name. He finally did. He was this white I guess white man named Chris. That's what he said his name was. <laughs> his name was Chris. No, no, yes. not a white man named Chris. So he he tells Chris what uh, how many angels were in the room. There were three angels to take him back. He uh, takes out the demon and he says, "Marty, are you okay? Are you with us?" I said, "Yeah, I'm fine." And it was like I don't know how to describe it. That it was I was like. I was in my body, but not in my body. Then it came back in my body. I don't know how to explain it. That have part. you ever, Marty McFly? Have you ever, have you ever, have you ever been with a Chris? No. Really? So in your whole life, you've never been in love with Chris? No, I don't know. Maybe I have. Maybe I haven't. I can't remember. I have been with a lot of white guys and Mexicans. I don't know. <laughs> I don't oh. know. I can't, I can't pinpoint a, a, a white name named Chris. But after that happens, we were done and everything like that. The next day, my body feels like I had ran a marathon or like I had worked out for five, for like a whole week or something. My body felt so like worn out. And he calls me, the guy that did the exorcism, he calls me and he says, How's it going and stuff like that? And I said, I, I'm doing good. I feel good. And I said, but my body feels really weak and like really sore. He goes, well, that's why it's called exorcism. We exercised it out of you, the demon out of you. Oh, I said, oh my God, that makes that makes sense. What orifice did did he come? Did Chris come out of? I guess my my mouth or something. I guess my mouth or something. Do you but remember you, feeling him exit your mouth? Do you remember the feeling of him leaving your mouth? It was like a cough, like a huge cough that on my throat, and it came out. It was like a it was like a huge cough. It was it was a it was an ugly feeling, but it was like a coughing sensation. Yeah. And so, and so you, have you ever, ever since Chris left your body, released himself from your body, have you ever seen this, these demons in sheets again? No, I don't want to open those doors ever again. I do. After that experience, I had this, I'm going to go to church now. I had this huge, like peaceful uh, feeling inside of me that I have never felt before, like a peace that God gave me. He gave me this peace. He yeah. told me two. He told me two things out of this experience. Was it two a good? Things. 
was a good piece? <laughs> Shut up. It was a it was an inner piece, inner God piece. Okay. It was an inner God piece. And he told me two things. He said, Do not worry about the devil because the war the war with the devil is over. So we already won that war. So don't worry about him. Don't worry about any of his shenanigans that he does with you. We already won that. And then he also told me, maybe because I was a UFO nut, but he also told me that there was no such thing of, about aliens or otherworldly things like that. There was no such thing as that. So you're telling me that. that went through your exorcism, God told you there are no aliens. Yes. Oh my yes. God, Marty McFly. A lot of people are going to be very upset because a lot of people really believe in aliens out there. And you and know, I truly believe that. I truly, huh, what would you say? And but they and the people feel like aliens come and visit them too, and they probe them and do all these, and they poke and they pull their hair too. I don't. I do not know why he told me that. Why he told me that truth. Uh, that there's no such things as aliens, maybe because I was uh, putting my focus on that subject, you know, throughout my life or something like that. Mm. But yeah, it was it was a trip. It was a very scary trip. I really wanted to go on a show to tell that story because I love my experience. I would never take back that experience because I loved it. It was a very scary. Ex it was a true experience. I was not hallucinating. I just it was an experience that I will never forget. The now when you when do you remember what the voice sounded what Chris's voice sounded like because you 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 say that when you were possessed he identified himself did he have like a deep manly voice or did he it was it was it was, a, it was a like singing. a it was I guess it, to to describe it it was just I couldn't describe the the sound of the voice it was just like a voice in your head that you have in your head. But it's talking to you know how you think or it's it, I can explain it like that that it's talking back to you. Oh, so, you get so it? when you would physically speak, it didn't sound different. Mm -mm, it didn't sound different. No. Oh. It was I, I don't know. It was, no. You mean when I was doing my exorcism? Yeah, I mean during your exorcism, girl. Oh no, it was just my voice. Oh. It was just my voice. Yes, but it was an experience. Do you, do you, do you, when you sit back and you reflect and you think, why do you think that demon tried to come for you? I, to be honest, I was doing, like I said, really, really, really hard drugs. Mm -hmm. And I know now those drugs open a lot of, a lot of doors that are very, very demonish and very horrible to open those doors. Sometimes you can't close them. And fortunately, I closed it. He literally opened a door when I was running out of my apartment to open this door to let these other demons in. And it was reflecting back on it. What, what was the question? What, what did you ask me? Is, is why do you think that this demon targeted you and came for you? But yeah, you feel like it was because you were... You were yeah, I was doing I was doing the hard drugs and I was doing bad things and I was not being responsible and I wasn't I would I, it was just I was being a bad man. Let's just say that I was doing very bad things, very very bad things. You're being a bad girl. Very bad girl. Very bad boy. <laughs> yes, very bad boy. God, do you ever now when you sit back and because you know my the my, the scariest movie of all time for me is The Exorcist. When you sit back and watch, you can you watch exorcism movies or or I can't watch them? those movies. They take I you back to your own. Experience. Yeah, I can't. I, I I you know really like scary movies and stuff like that. I just cannot watch those exorcism movies. I can't watch them because I've lived it and I felt it and I've seen a demon. I've seen the Chris the ghost with the sheet. I've seen. The uh, Marty, are you single or are you are you married or what's the tea? I'm single. I've been single for a long time. I'm like a born again virgin. Like I, yes. When's the last time you had trade, Marty? I actually, for the first time, I've never had grinder before. I actually did grinder for the first time, like a couple weeks ago, my first time. And you know, I hooked up and along. It's been it's been it had been a couple of years. I was celibate for a couple of years. Oh, and how was that experience returning back into that world and letting those demons back in? <laughs> the sexual demons? Yes. 
I was really nervous. I was like shaking, actually. Did you enjoy it? At first I did, and then I I didn't enjoy it after that. I was like, I need to stop. I didn't, you know, maybe because of, I don't know. I just didn't enjoy it. You did. And you, and you just did, the, you did it the one time? I did it the one time, and I deleted Grinder after that. <gasps> Marty, why? What happened? You feel like it was too much. I just didn't want to, I don't know. I just didn't want to do that anymore. I can take care of my sexual pleasures myself, um, you know. So I I just didn't want to anymore. Maybe I just didn't feel like it wasn't my thing. Yeah. Okay. I understand. Well, maybe you can come on Drag Me to Love on Thursday, honey. Are you, are you, are you possibly looking for love? I'm not. Oh, she's not bothered. I'm not bothered by the trade or... The hot guys, mind you, I love hot guys, but I'm not bothered with that right now. I'm doing me. I'm focusing on me, making that money, you know, doing that stuff, making that cheese. Oh. I want to see you with somebody, Lush. I want to see you. You've said, I remember that story a long time ago that you went to Mexico and you legitimately, uh, you had like this connection with this guy. You remember that? Yes. And you really liked him. Something tells me you like making the Mexican connection. You like Mexican boys? I did have a Mexican boyfriend for like four years. He didn't speak any English. Oh. I barely spoke Spanish, but um, we worked it out. And so you were still able to communicate? Yes, I am Mexican, a sexy Mexi, but um, I was born here. He was born in Durango, Mexico, and didn't speak a lick of English. He was a wet from any game, you know, illegally. But um, yeah, it was a good, oh, I loved him but that was over years ago. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah I, when I went to Monterrey, I met this boy and um, he, he would have been so like venom for me. Like he would have made me fall completely in love with him. He was, he was just everything. He was so sweet. And um, I was, it was so funny because I was in full creature drag. I was wearing crazy makeup, rhinestones, crazy lashes. Like I did not look anywhere in the realm of, of sexy, it was more mm -hmm. like an artistic kind of face. And I found it very interesting that he was like enamored by me. Like he wouldn't, the whole night he didn't let my hand go. And he was very attractive. He kept, I feel, I remember feeling so uncomfortable because he kept trying to, he kept uh, trying to kiss me and my lips, I was wearing black lipstick with glitter and rhinestones on them. And, and he kept trying to kiss me on my lips. And I was like, I can't. But he, and he he would like steal these kisses from me, and I remember at the end of the night, he had like glitter all over his lips. He was just he was very cute, very attractive, and um, I remember just feeling like such a moment with that man. But I remember that story. You know, it just wasn't meant to be. I'm never going to see that man ever again. What What do you see in the future with you with somebody? You've been single for a long time too, or, or have you had a boyfriend? I don't think you've had a boyfriend, have you? Never had a boyfriend, always been single. I've had a lot of, you know, experiences, but no, no, I wouldn't, none of the boys that I've ever, I would ever consider them like real, like real dating or a real boyfriend. I don't feel like I've ever made that real genuine connection. And I think as time goes on, it just gets harder because I've just gone through so many things with men. Like it's really difficult for me now to take men seriously. Um, you know. I don't know how the, the boys are in the Valley because my family's from Mercedes and Westlaco. I don't know the gay scene there, um, but I, are they the same guys there that you've seen and that there's no fresh meat there to oh, meet? Sure it's even, I actually prefer when I meet men and talk to men in, in larger cities. Yes. Like here, it's small cities. So yes. The, it, the culture feels like it's five years in the past. Yes. So a lot of DL... There's a lot of, they're not comfortable. Um, yeah. Out. They're not, com they're just, there's no, there's not a lot of evolution. They're, they're men a lot of them, a lot, not everyone, but a lot of the men here, their mentality is also very like machista, very old, yes. people, very like they still don't, they, they mm -hmm. love it, but they still don't understand, they can't understand that they can't wrap their head around it. So a lot of the men here, it's still very much a kink. It's very much, uh, transactional, they're looking for something and that's all they want and then so it's it's difficult it's very difficult um, 
That's what it is in the gay scene. It's always about sex, 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 and it's very hard to find somebody that's true that you want to get to know. Yes. Wow. Yes. Well, Miss Marty, thank you for calling and sharing your story. I'm glad you survived the exorcism. Thank you for telling, letting me tell my story. I've been wanting to tell this to somebody. I have told my family. I really wanted to tell the story to other people and to the public, and thank you for letting me do that. I really love you. I live for you. I love you too. Thank you for calling in, mi amor. Bye. Miss Marty McFly coming through for the girls. Everyone, please, please, please like this video. If you guys are enjoying um, this kind of video, these kind, this kind of topic, these kind of conversations, please like it because as you know, we continue to run this channel and me and Joella come up with these shows. If we feel like, eh, people are not really bothered, people didn't really like it, it didn't, you know, no one, no one paid attention, we have to cancel the shows. We just canceled Cooking the Future. Um, we felt like it didn't really work. Uh, we canceled Entering the VR World. Actually, Entering the VR World was a big hit. I actually wanted to continue Entering the VR World, but I also have to respect Joella felt like, you know what? It's actually causing problems for me <laughs> doing these live streams in the VR world uh, because, you know, people in the VR world, she she actually genuinely likes going into the virtual reality world. And she feels if she continues to live stream while she's in the VR world, she's going to piss people off. So uh, she just didn't want to pursue it anymore. And I have to respect that. And, and you know what? I actually, even me, I also did not want to pursue it because... Uh, I I enjoy the anonymity of like going into the VR world, talking to people, like making friends, making connections. And when we started to do videos, you know, I started to feel like now I'm every time I would go on the VR world, we were being like people who watch the show were coming on and looking for us. And and then before you knew it, I was like, oh my god, I don't even know who I'm talking to. Do you know who I am? And they were like, oh yeah, we know who you are. And I was like, oh no. I was coming on here like I I liked the anonymity of it. I liked that I didn't I didn't want to you know that people didn't know who I was, and and uh, you know I liked that I would go on there and I would talk to people and get to know people and stuff like that. Go, I, I I will say cooking the future didn't work, but Joella and I were talking about possibly doing a tarot reading show where me and her read cards and then that's all we do for that show and then maybe bringing another show where all we do is cook so she'll cook on her end and then i'll cook something on the air fryer on my end and then we'll eat together and then so we can have maybe a separate cooking episode and then maybe a separate tarot card reading episode so that's definitely a possibility for the future but cooking the future where we mix both of the mediums together I just, I felt like it was not, it didn't work. It was a little distracting. I could tell that she was so busy cooking and doing all these things that, you know, it was weird. It just didn't work. But um, yeah, we'll see. But for now, if you guys like this kind of show, like, this is your opportunity. Like the video. What you can do is you can hit the X to remove yourself from the conversation. Go over to the little like, press the like, and then you go head on under the like, you can, you can press live chat and you will return back to the conversation. Let me bring in the next victim. Shalo. Oh my God, hey. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> oh my God, I'm good, girl. How old are you? What's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, okay, so I'm 29. I'm calling from Paris. Um, oh, how yeah. fabulous. <laughs> okay, I'll be quick so no one treads me. Um, okay, so the first one was when... Um, so we lived in a really old house when I was growing up and sometimes the lights would go out. And um, there was one day when my mom was like, okay, I'll be back in like two hours and you and your brother stay inside. We're like, okay. So the house, because it was old, sometimes you would hear like, um, you know, people, like not people, but like you would hear like noises. So it sounded like footsteps, but everyone's like, no, you're just hearing things, whatever, whatever. So, <laughs> so during that time that we were there, the, it started to rain really hard and the lights did go out. So I had to go downstairs into the basement and the way you had to enter no. was you had to go outside <laughs> and open up the basement door. So my brother, who was about four years younger than me, stood at the top and he was afraid to come downstairs. And I was like, okay, you know what? I've done this before. It's okay. 
I go to turn on the lights and I can hear this like, like, like a, almost like a whistle. Like, <laughs> like, you know, and I was just like, what is that? Okay, okay. So <laughs> I go to, you know, turn on the lights. I hear everything. He's like, okay, the lights are on. I'm like, okay. And, you know, I kind of, you know, when you get to the top of the stairs, we have to close the, the you know, the basement door. And we both saw two eyes in the corner, like right where I had been. No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I can still remember because we didn't even like, we didn't lock the door, which I mean, but we just slammed it shut and then ran inside. And we just waited until, you know, my mom came home. And she was just like, oh, there's nothing down there. <laughs> but after we moved out of the house, um, you know, even my other sister was like, yeah, I would hear like, like a, as if someone's walking around upstairs in the attic. It was just really weird. And, and I don't know, but I'll never forget that feeling of like where I had just stood, something with where we saw eyes, like two glowing eyes in the corner <laughs> of my Scooby-Doo. Um, but yeah, <laughs> ah, the the this can I say this? Yeah. It it's have you ever seen The Conjuring Two with the nun? Yes. <laughs> is your does your house is it is it giving the same energy? Because the way you're explaining it, where you had to go outside to go in and enter the basement, it's it sounds like the houses in the UK. It's very common to have like a basement outside. Was it similar? It was, well, not necessarily, because there was a door inside, but my dad had locked it, which he never really said why. <laughs> but oh. It was locked from the inside. But yeah, we had to go outside and open it up. And I have the other, I have another story. It's really small. And this one takes place in America. <gasps> what happened? Oh my God, you can okay. tell me what happened over here, girl. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this one, it's like, I was staying at a friend's house and, um, you know, we had to, it was like a pretty big house and it was a little farther out, and, you know, away from the city, but we decided to go to the beach and it was like about 7 p.m. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like really dark, like, you know, the sun had just like gone, right? So we were making ice cream sundaes and we were going to go with the, because, you know, we were trying to save money, take our ice cream with us to the beach. And I was the last one out. So I started putting everything out and I could see them through the front. So from the kitchen, you had to walk through the living room and through this other room, and then you would be by the back entrance. So as I'm walking, and this is maybe five seconds tops, I'm walking and I'm, cl I'm turning off the lights behind me. <laughs> and in those few seconds, as I'm going through the dark, I can feel, because my hair was down, and I felt and heard someone breathing on my neck. I just... And I heard the oh, like, no. like on my neck, and no. I don't. And I just kind of I couldn't turn around because I just felt so like, like I was just like I have to get out. And I get to where everyone is, and they're just staring at me. They're like, "What?" And I'm like, "Is your dog here?" Because I I couldn't like fathom what was going on. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was just really weird. And and it was an old house because she said that like, you know, her parents had bought it. It was you know I don't know just like an old house and they renovated it. There was never any reason, but I just know what I felt because my hair was not up, but I felt on my neck, like, you know, when someone breathes on your neck and like, same thing with uh, <laughs> with someone, you know, you know what that feels like and you know what it sounds like when someone's like, all right, in your ear. So I was like, <laughs> so yeah, that was crazy. Can you, can you tell me how are, are you, how are the gay people, <laughs> the homosexuals, how are they in in the UK and Paris? Are they? Uh, come to Paris. <laughs> huh? Come to Paris. <gasps> do you think they'll live for? Do you think they like fat girls over there? I mean, <laughs> they'll live for you. They will live for you. I know people that listen to you. Well, in the UK mostly, but um, I I put it on <laughs> for like some of my friends when I'm getting ready because they're still watching the mornings here, and they're just like, "Oh my god, you're watching that little gay show again!" I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> Oh my god, that's so cute! I, one so of my one, one of my really really good friends, I met her while I was we were we were both working on Drag Race Mexico, and she's from Paris. Yes. She's so tiny. She's so beautiful. She looks like a vampire. I tell her, I'm like, honey, you could you could play a vampire. What is it about the people in Paris that they look like little vampires? They look so beautiful. <laughs> they are. That's yeah. 
to the girls that go out, they don't get any sunlight because they be living their vampire fantasy. No. We're, we're getting some sun, you know. <laughs> I think it's also in the UK because it's like this year in the UK, it's been so I was like, ah, oh, I'm just gonna go back to Paris and hang out there. But you should come to Pride in um in Paris. It's really it's I, really I, fun. I, I really Next year. To go to Paris. I do I do get a lot of boys who hit me up from the UK like in London yes. I know that in London they love the big girls the boys like big girls in London but maybe in Paris too are, are the Parisians are they very passionate lovers yes <laughs> really yes <gasps> even when I was living in London I think all the guys that were like that I was with were all, they were all French <laughs> Really, they're, they're yeah. hungry, huh? Something tells me that they're very hungry. Yes, and they're very, they're very passionate. I know that's like the stereotype, but they are, and they're just—I don't know. They're just—it's just really beautiful. <laughs> God, I need to go to Paris. I you need, need to, to come to Paris. Paris. Bring Joella with you as well. Come to Paris. <gasps> drag well, you guys need to drag yourselves to love in Paris. We'll just drag <laughs> ourselves to Paris. Oh my God! Well, oh, look, the little shoulder. <laughs> Thank you so much for calling in, Mi Amor, oh, and telling us this beautiful so story about the trade breathing on your neck and oh. the, I mean, wait, the trade, the the <laughs> the paranormal <laughs> entity breathing on your neck and the paranormal entity watching you from down below in, in the in the in the conjuring house. Oh, Thank God. you. Wait, Lush. make some noise for Miss Lush in Paris. Come to the catacombs. <laughs> I, I need to go to the, I, if I went to Paris, I want to go to the, um, what's the name of that Parisian castle, the famous Parisian castle where the, the, the King George and all those. Oh, Versailles. I want to go to the Versailles, honey. Is it, is it, is it, is it big girl friendly over there? Will I be able to ri ride around in a scooter? You can ride a bicycle, yeah. <gasps> it's beautiful. They have, um. They have like reenactments in the summer as well because there'll be people dressed up like King Louis the Fourteenth and whatnot. So it's really beautiful. Is it really? You is need it, to come. How's it? What's the weather like in Paris? Is it hot or is it like just? Is it nice and? <sighs> it's really hot right now. I'm actually like really burnt. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It's been beautiful. Oh, I can imagine, and the food must be delicious. <laughs> the food is so good. Yeah, I never stop eating and. It's just like, oh, every, like everything just tastes really fresh and there's a lot of cheese if you love cheese. And I mean, I yeah, it's like a stereotype, but like we have baguettes and cheese every day <laughs> and it's fine. It's oh my God, I have to go to Paris. Then, it's definitely a dream of mine, but I want to go to Paris and I want to spend a, like a week or two weeks there. Like I want to, I want to feel mm -hmm. my, my Emily in Paris fantasy. I want to stay at a really, really <laughs> nice a really nice accessible like little hotel and I want to be able to go around. I want to have a lot of sex. I want to meet a lot of men. Yes. I want to eat a lot of food. All the and underground I, parties. Yeah. And I, that's what it is. I want to go to the, I want to go to the bathhouse. I want to go to the, to the sex club. I want to go to all that nasty. I want to come to, Oh, I got scammed by, okay. <laughs> no. Last year. Um, it was on a work, okay, <laughs> well, I don't, well, it was a work trip, uh -uh. but um, so some of the girls and I decided they wanted to go to Moulin Rouge, and there was no tickets, they didn't buy tickets in advance, and I was like, well, we can't just walk, you know, walk in, so there was the club right next door, <laughs> oh, Joella, oh my god. Joella's here, Joella, did you get a little piece of trade already? I did, I did. You look, you look, a, you look a little flustered, you look like, <laughs> you look like the, you had the exorcism of Lilac Rose. I did, and there's another one. My uh, the chef, the Magnum chef. He's coming over. Well, he wants me to go over there because he said he's drunk. And oh. are you I, gonna go? Oh no! I don't know. Or do you feel satisfied? Something tells me you're not satisfied. Nah, I can keep going. I can keep going. <gasps> no. I just said I just left so abruptly. I didn't. You know, I don't leave the girls hanging. <laughs> oh, this woman is not well. Did you see the green bobbing head above the bed as you were messing around with your trade? He was in the back of me, feeling no. me. Out. No. <laughs> 
we're we're here talking with Ms. Liz. She's from Paris, and she's telling us that we need to go to Paris. Oh, oh my Bobby. Wow. Yes, that we need to go to Paris, good. France. That would be like so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Catacomb trade. We need some catacomb trade. The vampire trade in Paris, girl. Wait, so uh, we. So <laughs> this is how we got scammed. So. The lady's like, this club is just as good as Moulin Rouge. And we're like, like I did, I knew it was going to be shit. <laughs> but I was like, okay, they want to go in. And we went in. There was one, <laughs> one lonely stripper <laughs> in the whole place. And you get a free drink with your, the show. And then every drink that we asked for, the guy's like, we don't have that. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> you don't have tequila? <laughs> and he's like, no. <laughs> and we're like, so what do you have? And he's just like, and he also, like, it was just it was just a hot mess. So he gave us our drinks and they were also really terrible. And the girl spent more time <laughs> choosing her playlist than she did on stage. And the whole time Jamala, where did you go, Jamala? <laughs> Jamala left again. Jamala's like bye. She's gonna go get my train. She's gonna go get my train. <laughs> oh my god. Miss Liz, thank you so much for calling in. We live for you. We love oh. for you. Everybody makes a round of applause for the Parisian doll, Miss Liz. <laughs> Thank you, oh. mi amor, for coming in. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Let me give some shout-outs before we bring in the next victim. Shout-out to Citizen 52. We have Miss Citizen 52. She said, Liz, bring the dolls to the Lind Buffet of Paris. Oh, my God. I wonder if Paris has buffet. The buffet, honey, the buffet. Let me see right here. Oh my God. Shout out to Miss Marty McFly. <gasps> Miss Marty McFly, honey, coming through for the dolls. She said, I love you, Lush. Thank you again for letting me tell my story. It felt so good to let that out. I love you. Oh, Miss Marty McFly. And we live for you, Marty. Miss Martisha, she's here, Miss Martisha McFly. Back to the future, bitch. She came all the way from the future, honey. Okay, let me see. Where are the girls? Shout out to Miss Lady Shug. Miss Lady Shug said, Lush, should I come on and tell you about my skinwalker story? Yes, Lady Shug. This is stories of the paranormal, honey. The paranormal. Shout out to Miss Desi Doll. We have Miss Desi Doll. She said, if you believe in evil spirits and you like horror movies, watch the movie Nefarious. It's based on how demonic possession works and how demonic spirits operate <gasps> the knowledgeable doll she said honey i have some work homework for you to do go and watch this movie shout out to miss ivan fedatov honey miss Ivan fedatov let's bring in the next victim oh 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 betty crocker honey what is your name where are you calling from and how old are you honey my name is betty uh uh, I'm 24, calling in from the Dallas, Texas. Oh my God, Dallas! Dallas has some of the best trade in the country, honey. Miss Dallas, Texas. We have Betty Crocker in the house now. Betty, tell me about a time when you were shook to the core by the paranormal. So, um, I'm originally from Houston, so a little bit more swampy, you know, similar to New Orleans, uh, you know, black magic stuff. But I moved into a new house when I was like 11. Um, and this house had like insidious vibes from the jump. Like you couldn't keep a door open at night or you see like little creatures crawling in the corners. But when my grandpa ended up getting colon cancer and oh. down in Houston, you know, we have MD Anderson. So, oh. you know, they, they ship a lot of the cancer patients down there. So he ended up coming and living with uh, my family to like get treatment, whatever. He was stage four. And like, I didn't really have a good relationship with him to begin with. Cause I was his little like sissy boy, like, you know, Oh, get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, we know the older generation of men, honey, they yeah. can't take it. They can't deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I know what he was doing off at war too. Like he can't tell me otherwise, but I know what he was up to. Um, but I was like a former BBW girl back when I was a kid. And one of the things he always requested to have at the house that he could eat during chemo was ice cream sandwiches. So I would always sneak them and we ended up feuding over it. And he'd be like, stop taking my ice cream sandwiches, bitch. And I would be like, no, bitch, they're my ice cream sandwiches. And mm -hmm. 
you know, I was always like, had this grudge against him. And I know he had a grudge against me. So six months later, yada, 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 he went through his last gig. Um, let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, went on, passed to another world. Oh I, I was a very scared child. So I like to run to my parents' room at night and sleep with them. But my grandma was still staying over. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do a two for one. I'm going to run to her room, comfort her after her husband died. And I'm going to get to sleep with someone and not have this ghost invade my personal space. So my grandma like is like, sure, whatever, get in bed. So I'm laying in bed alone. And she goes into the bathroom to like get ready for bed. And I'm like laying there trying to go to sleep. And there's this plastic CVS bag across the room. All the doors to the room were closed. So the bathroom door, the entrance, it was like winter in Houston. So like no AC was running, no heat was running. Like there was no circulation going on. And the bag lifted up, did a loop-de-loop and landed right next to where my head was, like on the floor. And I was like, did, did anyone just see that? Like very much like paralyzed in fear. My and grandma, how old were you? I was 11. <gasps> oh my God. And I was like, why is he coming to feud with me in the afterlife? Like I'm an 11 year old, give it up. So right. My grandma came out and I told her and she was like, yeah, bullshit, like go to sleep. The, the plastic bag was there. I can't, like I'm a very rational person. I cannot think of an explanation, but he ended up haunting the house later on. And like, I have a shit ton of stuff that went down in that house particularly. No. So you believe your your dead grandfather was haunting you? Oh yeah, I think he still is sometimes. No, is he sometimes, is he in the room watching you? I think the call's coming from inside the house. Oh my God, do you think your grandfather has ever seen you like, you know, you're getting some trade and he's there and disapproving and very upset? I think, you know, he might be enjoying himself, but I want to be know. You know how they got down in the barracks, like, come on. No. Miss, uh, Miss Betty Crocker, are you single? Yes, I'm, I'm single. I've been single for like six or seven months. <gasps> no. And have you been having, have you been having trade? I just actually started getting back into the trade experience. So yeah. No. Trade it again. Oh my God. What was your first foray? Would you remember your first time when you went back into you, you downloaded Grinder and you had your first piece of trade? Do you remember? So I'm not a Grinder doll. I'm a Tinder. Oh. And then you can. Oh, download. she likes to be the Tinder girl. So she likes to go on the journey first. Yeah, yeah. I like to have a little bit of emotional connection. So when it like goes off the rails, you sort of have trauma from it. It's kind of fun. Uh, but the first guy, he the first place he took me was to a country club and i was okay like this could be my man but no you know he's like all the rest <gasps> but so what happened so he took me to the country club and then he convinced me he's like hey like we we should go to a movie after this and that was like never in the plans and i was like mm, i had a friend's potluck after but you know i, I was a little my oven was turned on at that point. Mm. I'm ready to get pounded for filth. So I was like, what? like, let's go in this movie. Movie was fine, but you know, you do some stuff during. What um, movie was it? It was a Wes Anderson Asteroid City movie. It was an artistic experience. I think Wes Anderson would have enjoyed what we were doing. <gasps> so what did you do? You started touching him? Yeah, like it starts like holding hands, you know, it then progresses like kissing, touching. Was yeah. there other people in the theater? Were you the only ones? No, no, no. We weren't the only ones. But, you know, we're quiet. We're discreet dolls. But I where were you? Were you at like at the top of the theater or at the bottom? Yeah, yeah. At the top. So no one can see y'all making out. Yeah. Like maybe the people working at the theater, but like who's really looking, you know? I don't care. They get a free show. And so then what happened? Did you, don't tell me you went down on the candy cane. Not there, no, that was in the car. Oh. But, you know. So you didn't stay and finish watching the movie? No, we watched the movie, but, you know, things got to simmer, things got to simmer and settle. Oh, I think your grandfather was watching you the entire time. 
I think your grandfather was sitting right next to you on, on seat 13 G watching asteroid city with you. And he was, he was very disapproving. He was very upset. You know, he might've been helping me out with the trade. Actually, you never you know. know. You, well, you never know. You yeah. know what, you know, once they move on to the next life, you know, now they, they have nothing to lose. So yeah. Like his wife's still alive. Like how's she going to tell? He's got a good like 10 years before he got to reunite and boo her up again. Rise, rise. Oh my God. And then what happened? He took you, this trade, did he take you home? Well, we went to my home. Yeah, yeah. Oh. My home did the game. Did he pound you out the way you wanted to be pounded out? It was very needed. Let's put it that way. Really? Up. And it was a one-time session. You never saw him again? Yeah. He ghosted me. So maybe my performance <laughs> wasn't up to par, you know? But that's no, that. don't blame yourself. Why are you don't blame maybe it was him. Or 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 did you feel like did you feel like you didn't you didn't give it sickening? No, I definitely did. I was going to the nines, but you never know with these men. Oh my god. No, you never know. You were, but something tells me your grandfather was in the corner watching. Yeah. He was, he was watching you get pounded out for fail. And where grandma was on the other side, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Was it was it a turtle or was it a, a little worm? A sneaky worm. Oh, he was a turtle. Oh, so he did and he and he was given he was giving the strength. Oh, yeah. A lot of strength. A lot really? Yeah. And then he, I can't, you listen, I can't believe he took you on a date, took you to the country club, took you to the movies, all that, just to pound you out and then ghost you. I think, so I've always been like a proletariat doll. Like I'm very like for the people. I think like some of these rich people, they sort of get a kick out of it. They're like, oh, I mean, I was basically his, you know, his doll for the night. He like wind and dine me. I didn't. Was pay he for an older? Was he an older man? No, 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 no. He was like maybe three, four years older than me. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, it was probably daddy's credit card. Who knows? Oh, but but this was okay. So this was a man of he he was the one who treated you out like the doll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm not you like I'm very used to like hey let's go split half half. He was very like no like <gasps> I kind of love that. I I like that. Was, well, at least he paid for everything. I know it was it was so nice. I was like, oh, I feel like a natural woman for once. Oh my god, something tells me, Betty, you need to come on Drag Me to Love. Are you looking for love or no? I don't know. Only if there's people from Dallas. I've never heard anyone on from Drag Me to Love in Dallas. Oh, okay. So could you you don't want to do the long distance? You don't want to entertain it. No, it needs to be like. It needs to be readily available. You want someone who's going to take you out to eat. Mm -hmm. Someone who's going to go out to the park with you. Someone who's going to come hang out at the house. Yeah. And you need to be. You need to have access to the piece. He needs to be able to pound you out, yeah. wreck it, destroy it, bounce it, and he has to be there so that your grandfather can be in the room watching. Yes. You know. You got to give him. No. <laughs> I ate some of no! you know, I No, not the dead grandfather from beyond the grave watching you your whole life. But something tells me that's really, that's what's happening. You know, they're all men are trash. Let's be real. Yeah. But I mean, yes, but sometimes you can find someone who is really sweet and really nice. But, but you also have to be realistic. You're it, not, ev not every, not every, he might not check every single, you know, every little dot on your checklist, but I'm sure there's a guy out there who can, he can, he can check most of them. Yeah. Have he, you might, he might be sweet. He might be caring. He might be, you know, he might listen to you and hopefully he's got a nice piece and he can pound you out too. But sometimes it's, it's hard getting everything that you want. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think, you know, Hopefully your grandfather's out there and he can help you. He can, he can, as he's there watching, walking behind you, following every step that you take, he can, he can help you find a man who's there, who can help, who can, who's going to be the right fit for you. You know, he'll guide me. He'll guide me there. Sure. <laughs>
Miss Betty Crocker, thank you so much for calling in. Miss Betty Crocker. Everyone make some noise for Miss Betty Crocker. I think you need to come on Drag Me to Love. Okay, because baby. Something tells, me, something tells me the girls live for you, Miss Betty. Aw, I live for y'all. I'm well, I, I need to meet Joella too. So maybe, maybe. Yes, come on, drag me to love, mi amor. Something tells me you're gonna be you're gonna have a lot. The boys who are in Dallas who are watching the show, they're gonna sign up. They're gonna live. Thank you, everyone. Make some noise for Miss Betty. Miss Betty Crocker's in the house. The infamous Betty Crocker. Shout out to Miss Chris B. We have Miss Chris B. She said that she would like to make an official statement that she does not know that man who said that Chris possessed him, the demon Chris. Chris B would like to say that she does not know. She does not know her. She does not see her. She does not claim her at all, honey. Shout out to Miss Classic Gay. We have Classic Gay. She said, please have someone with Marty McFly at all times. At all times. Betty Crocker was fun. I live for Betty Crocker. Let me see. Who's on here? Where are the girls? Okay, let's bring in the next victim. Hello. Hello, Luscious. How are you? Como estas? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Um, I don't Where have like a parent. Oh. I think I mistook your I mistook your accent. Where are you from, darling? I'm from the UK. <gasps> the UK dolls are in the house tonight. The UK How dolls old are, are in you? The house. I'm How 26. old are you? What's your name, baby? 26. I'm Jordan. <gasps> Jordan, darling, tell me about a time when you've been shook to the core by the paranormal. <laughs> well, this wasn't a paranormal story, but I was definitely shook to the core. What um, happened, I was in Barcelona <gasps> on my own, solo traveling. Barcelona. And I said to myself, I'm going to go to the little gay bathhouse. Oh. So I go to the little gay bathhouse okay. and I see a man inside the bathhouse with a really elongated piece. And how so many? 11, 12, 13? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, we do centimeters. I want to say it was a solid 12 centimeters. I don't know. It was a big one. It was okay. big. Okay. Um, and so I go and explore. I see what this guy is saying. Obviously, Are you a little bottom? Are you a little bottom woman? No, no, no. I'm top. Oh, you're a top. Okay, but yes. the piece still still gave you a little something. Yeah, that's still... I, I love something to taste, shall oh, I say. Oh, you, like, you like to mm -hmm. eat the candy cane. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So um, we do the business, and then at the end... Do you, ever, do, you ever, do you ever get so hungry that you say, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and really feed tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna be fed. I'm gonna allow him to feed me. Um, you sometimes yeah. sometimes I'm quite a vanilla little vanilla little creature, to be honest. <gasps> so most strictly, strictly, strictly top, strictly top. There has been times where I've ventured to the bottom of the mountain, but okay. I think because it's such an intimate thing, I'm like okay. I need to know this person for a while. I need to like really trust them. Um, and obviously in a bathhouse, it's difficult to get to that place. To reach the intimacy. So you'd exactly. rather just eat the candy cane. Exactly, exactly. Oh, but you do you do be giving your candy cane to the girls. Of course, yeah. <gasps> okay, okay. So, yeah. They, so, so you, you being able to top the girls is not the uh -huh. same level in, of intimacy for you being able to get topped. Yeah, it's yeah. That makes sense. Is that weird? It makes, no, it makes complete oh. sense to me. It makes complete oh, wow. sense. To me. Onto the camera. Can you see me? Oh my god! <laughs> oh, Jordan, <laughs> how are you, sweetie? I'm not bad. Um, I'm currently in South Korea. This is not my apartment. Um, oh, but yeah. It's... What are you doing in South Korea, honey? Um, I'm working with some like music people out here. I do songwriting, <gasps> oh. so I'm like creating some music with some Koreans at the moment. Oh, what kind of music? What's the genre? Um, it's like a mixture between pop, R and B, and soul. Um, Ooh, I but, love a pop song. 
Yeah, there's some songs that I've been working on recently that I would say are more on the soul side of the spectrum than like the R&B pop. Oh, is there anything? Can we find you on Apple Music or Spotify? Can we stream you? Yeah, yeah. I have one demo on uh, on the Spotify that I'll, I can put the link in the chat. Oh, what about Apple Music? Are you not an Apple Music girl? I think it's on Apple Music as well. Um, okay, what's, the, what's the name? What's the name of the artist? Let me find it because I love to listen to new music, especially pop music. Okay, I'm going to put it into the chat so you can see it. Um, but yeah, it's just my name, Jordan Conte, and then it's called Close to You. Okay, Jordan Conte. Yeah. Jordan, what kind of bottoms do you live for? Um, honestly, I like the bear type. I like someone who's big. I like Ooh, a bit like of... the thick ums. Yeah, I like the thick ums. With well fed. Butt. With a big butt. Yeah. yeah. Do you want a, yeah. like, do you want a hairy butt? Um, you know, a bit of fuzz, that's all right. Okay. That's Not all right. Much. Not too much. I just want to get lost in the jungle. Okay. Yeah. Let's see, Jordan. Jordan, where are you? Jordan. What's the name of your single? Uh, it's called Close to You. Oh, I see it here. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to listen to it after we finish because I don't want to get okay. copyright stricken, but <gasps> I can't <just> gonna listen. <laughs> Okay, before I listen to the song, paint to me wow. the story. What were you going okay, in what Barcelona? Were, what were the lyrics? No, oh. the song of the song. Oh, um, so in this song, I'm talking about. Oh my god, this is so cringe. But what? I'm talking no. about. <laughs> I'm talking about um, somebody who I liked, but um, basically, I was not trying to get too close to them because I can sense that. It would just be drama if I did. Um, they oh. were like, quote unquote, bisexual. Oh. Um, and yeah, I was just, at the time, I was just like, I want to get close, but I don't want to get hurt. Because you so, could feel that maybe he was not going to commit. Right. I, I just felt like it would be messy if I did go down that. But I was like, hey, I'm going to write a song about it. <gasps> oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. Well. Now I know, close to you. Okay, I can't wait now to know. the song. Now I know. Okay, so now tell me. Okay, so you like a you like a thick on bottom, <laughs> and um, was that what you were looking for in this bathhouse? Was so the in the bathhouse, it was quite dark, and I was like just curious. I saw the piece, and I was like, okay, oh. I'm gonna try some Spanish delight. Oh. Um, but my soul left my body when after we finished, I was like, you know, hey, what's your name? Like, are you from this area of Spain? Are you from somewhere else? Like, where do you live? And then he says, I live here. And I was like, oh, you live in Barcelona. And he was like, no, I live in the bathhouse. <gasps> no, no. So I feel, yes, I, <laughs> no. I feel I... like I did a Joella Puss. I did a Joella Puss no. in the bathhouse. Yeah, so he was one of those guys that you sometimes what the bathhouse is what like twenty dollars a night. Um, I think it's a lot less than that in Spain and at the time as well. Like, I guess inflation would have made it more expensive, but yeah. So he was paying about pretty much cheaper than a hotel room, and he yeah. would just yeah. he would just sleep there and just spend. Yeah. That yeah. is wild. Yeah. So when you know you have like the cubicles, the private cubicles. He would just I be in realized I, that was his bedroom that I went into. That was his home <laughs> that I went into. Did he, did he, could you? Did you feel like it was set up? Like he had his little clothes in there and no, all. There those... was nothing in there. I, and to be honest, this was like a long time ago. Now I was eighteen. Um, I don't remember there being like you know a little wash bag, a toothbrush, or anything like that. I don't remember that. Um, but yeah, he was like, yeah, I just live here. Oh my God. Shout out to Miss Randy Milan. Randy Milan said, Jordan Conte, I have some Mexican slash black cake you can try. Ooh. They tell me the boys are living for Jordan over here. The, the oh, boys are thirsty. You have them thirsty and hungry, <laughs> honey. The hungry, hungry hippos are out. Oh are you open to a long distance relationship, Jordan? Okay. So I, I, I'm currently in South Korea, 
I live in Chiang Mai in Thailand. And I'll be honest, I, I'm looking for love. I, I really am, but it's difficult because being in a different country, living in a different country is language barriers, cultural barriers. And yeah, there's just a lot of- How's the trade? How's the trade in South Korea? Are, you, are the girls on the grinder over there or no? Um, yes, the girls are on the grinder. I feel like over here, everybody just wants sex. And because oh, it's quite a homogenous place, everybody is Korean. Um, me being yeah, mixed race. Yeah, so rare I'm, delicacy out yeah, there. Yeah, they want to try some something oh, different. I see you're a popular girl over there. <laughs> <laughs> over here, yeah, a little bit. But oh. I've only I've not I've only done something with one guy over here. Oh. Just one. And did he give it? Did he give it real thickening or no? It was all right. It did the job. <gasps> oh no. I hate those when they just do the job. I love to have like a scary, ridiculous. Yeah adventure story that I can yeah. you know that leaves me I, I I want a man who's gonna shock me to my senses I want to be taken to the moon and back when yes, I'm in these situations. yes. I want a man to rock my world so mm -hmm. disgusting that I will never forget him yeah and that's only happened to me a few times but there are men that have rocked me so hard that even now I can think of like oh my god this was this was back in like 20, 2012, 2013, and I still remember that time. That guy, like, he fucking destroyed me and, oh like, he woke me up. He shook me. He killed me and then revived me. Oh, my God. Me. He, he killed me you. and revived me. I actually, you know, I've been traveling a lot, mm -hmm. and I can remember, like, out of all the men that I've had in the last two years, I can remember, like, three. Three okay. of them that really, like, I will never forget because they shook, they killed me and revived me, brought me back to life. Yeah. It's few and far between, though. I feel like sometimes God just blesses you. Yes. And sometimes he don't. Right. <laughs> he gives you a reminder to stay off grinder. You right. Know? Yeah. Is there any other apps that the girls use out there in the international girls? Um. Or is it just oh. mostly the grinder? There is one. In Thailand, people use Growler a lot. Oh. Have you heard of Growler before? Yes, we have Growler over here. Okay. Growler is yeah. for like the, the, the bears, the otters, the cubs. Yeah. Yeah. Very, I've it, not really it, been into anything other than Grinder though. Oh. Yeah. The um have you ever been in love, Jordan? <sighs> what is love? Look, tell me what love is, and I'll tell you if I've been there. Honey, I've never found it either, but but I I I feel I I fell in love once, but it was like that puppy love. I was very young, I was like 18 uh -huh. years old, and I remember like feeling pain, excruciating pain from how much I wanted this person, how infatuated and in love I felt with this man, but it was unrequited love. He would he was never going to love me. He was never going to see me. Mm. He did not see me in that same in the the way I saw him as as a human being worthy of mm. love. He did not see me like that. <laughs> and so it was very painful because it was unrequited yeah. and you know I felt like oh my god, I want to be with him. I like this is the person that I would want to be with for the rest mm. of my life. And so I, I feel like after that moment, I never was able to connect with anyone like that ever again. But I was also very young. I was 18. I was barely mm. like starting to hang around gay people because I had never really been around gay people. And so it was that like it was painful like that. It was very like the I would go home and listen to the Mariah Carey and I would listen to the Taylor oh. Swift and I would cry. Oh, like, oh, oh. oh. Yeah, I was a kid. I was 18. Oh. I was so young, so stupid, so naive. Uh, I used to be very like I believed in in the romance and the and yeah. the romantic comedy and in, in, in the Disney Prince yeah. Charming. Have you yeah. ever felt anything anywhere near that? I mean, okay, I feel like I've felt something similar, but I often question whether it's love or whether it's obsession or just desire or lust. Like, I feel like those emotions are quite difficult to figure out the difference between sometimes. Um, but I remember when I was 
like before I went to Barcelona, I was living in Leicester in the UK. Um, and yeah, there was one guy that I was obsessed with. I went to, he was working on the gay scene in Leicester, like in a bar. And um, so I was literally an insane person and I went and got a job in the same place. That is how obsessed Oh my I God. was over this young man. Like, I really lost it. And after that point, like you said, like I never felt that sense of desire again. Um, did, I feel did, like I'm just did, he, did, he, did he feel the same? Did he did he give you the chance, or you never got the shot? He gave me the chance, but I think it was really difficult to feel the same intense emotion that I was. I'm a Scorpio, so I feel like it was difficult for him to match that sort of energy. And in the end, it, it did just sort of fizzle out. Um, but it was a very embarrassing, psychotic moment for me, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it happens, it happens. But no, I think now that I'm older, like I, I feel like I've come close to love where it's been reciprocated. And like, it's just, it doesn't last with this lifestyle like I work online and I sort of just travel to different countries in Southeast Asia after a certain period of time people go back to their home country or whatever like their work contract is up and then they go back to their home country so you have these fleeting moments of intense emotion but it never really lasts yeah well, I mean, it's also difficult because you travel. It seems like you're very the traveling doll. You're always moving yeah. around. Yeah. I'm so starting to hate it, to be honest. Yeah. I, I've i been in that space of, like, you're traveling, you're traveling, you're traveling, and then you're like, bitch, I'm ready to just be in one place. Yes. Feel like I'm I'm creating a home mm. and just stay in one spot. Um because it's also no one talks about you know it's it's very taxing when you're just traveling because it's also difficult to make friends. Super God. difficult, super difficult, and you make some crazy friends as well. There's some people that you're like, whoa, you're an insane person, like for sure. <laughs> <you're not> insane. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think to be honest, like my mum and sister live in the Caribbean now, and so I sort of miss. Um, living with them because I used to live with them back in the UK. Um, there's a part of me that does want to like settle down, play some roots in the Caribbean or Mexico. I've heard really good things about Mexico. Have you um, ever been to Mexico? I've never been to Mexico. Girl, that would be that would that would be a, a culture shock. Do you reckon? It's very different. Um mm -hmm. I'm Mexican, and even I don't know if I could live in Mexico. It's just, I've it's, it. it's um, I guess it depends where you go, and it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of culture, yeah. but it's, it's just, it, it is a different planet. You know, there's, it's, there's a lot of, there's a sharp contrast between when you're moving around in places where you feel safe, and then you. All of a sudden, you can go into another street, and now all of a sudden, you're in a space where you don't feel safe. And do you speak wow. Spanish? No. So you're very the girl who just you just go to somewhere, and you, if you, if you don't even speak the language, huh? And you just yeah. you roll with it, and you figure it out. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's a good trait to have. That's a good way to be. But yeah, that's another one. If you don't speak Spanish over there, they do not speak English, and they they will try not to. And they do, and they're you know they're they can be very like oh you don't speak Spanish yeah they'll, they'll they'll be they'll be shady they'll be shady I'm, yeah to be honest like I, it's so arrogant of me I can hold my hands up and say that to like walk around the world and only speak English and expect that I'll be able to get by thank God I've been able to so far but I do recognize that like if I'm gonna be somewhere long term I need to learn the language yes yeah. Can you, ugh, the girls keep saying, can you, is there any way you can stand up for me and give me a little twirl, Jordan? I'm really, uh, like, listen, I've just had so much pasta. I feel like I'm a big BBW. We love a big B BBW. Oh, honey. Oh. Oh, I love those. I love those shorts. God, they are so, so comfortable. Can you see so, the fabric? Oh, my God. They are so comfortable. Oh, Jordan. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Jordan, you need to come on Drag Me to Love. 
You wow. need a contract to love on. You need a contract to love on Thursdays, honey. <laughs> maybe, maybe. You should. You should. Something tells mm -hmm. me you're gonna get a lot of these boys in the DMs, honey. They're gonna well, live. For you. Tell them. Tell them to go. First of all, listen to my goddamn music because yeah. these streams. First of all, please listen to that. Second of all, if you do feel like you could be a husband for me, this turned into paranormal drag me to love now. <laughs> I get um, very distracted by cute boys. Well, I did. Hey. Huh? I said I get very distracted by cute boys. What can I say? Oh my gosh. How do I say thank you in Spanish? Gracias. 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 Yeah, you're, you, you're, you're, you're going to speak the Spanish from Barcelona. Gracias. Gracias. I'm yeah. so bad with languages. Gracias. <laughs> yeah. That's well, how like, they say it. That's how is the Korean way now, babe. Gapsamida. Oh, say that one more time. Gapsamida. 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 Yeah. Gapsamida. Oh, I love that. Well, Jordan, <laughs> thank you so much for calling in tonight. Mm hmm. We need to call. We need you need to come back on Thursday, honey. Trust me, the girls, the boys will live. And okay. we, need to get, we need to get more of these uh, bathhouse stories. I love the bathhouse. So oh then what God. happened with this man when you found out? Did you go visit uh, him again at home? No, but I did go to visit the STI clinic straight after that. And no. <laughs> made sure that I got myself, oh you know, my the, like, the morning after pill, except for, you know, the HIV. Like, just to make sure that if you've been exposed, you can... Get rich, you know what I mean. So that's where I visited after. <laughs> Honey, you get a, a baby. If you're going to the bathhouse, you need to be you need to come already prepared with your prep, bitch. This is true. This is true. This is, no. To be honest, I feel like I'm in denial with myself about going on to prep. Like I don't have sex that often, but I do just need to go on prep. I need to get it. Well, you need to. You need to because. Well, I mean, it just depends. You you know yourself. You know how active you are. But if you do put yourself, and let's be honest, we all do it. If you if you like to have those little moments where you visit you visit the house where people bathe and things like that, you definitely you know you want to search and 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 have it available. You also can get on prep and then only you know take it when you need it. You know you don't need to be on it yeah. if you're not going to be sexually active. But then if you get yourself in a place where you're like, you know what, now I'm in a very active season, mm -hmm. start taking your prep before you know you're about to start activating yourself very hard. Mm -hmm. And then that way you feel very comfortable and safe and secure while you are activated and you are, you know, having fun and, and exploring your, your, your freedom, your sexual freedom. Because it, you know, prep can also be very liberating. Let me tell you, it opens yeah. doors to your, to your, Adventures. Yeah. It opens doors to the adventures, and it's just a different experience, you know. And yeah. so, especially if you're going to the house where people bathe, bitch, because the girls do be out there, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, maybe I'll come on Drag Me to Love. I just had another story of a bathhouse adventure in my mind, but maybe I'll save that. Come on Thursday, honey. Come on Thursday. You're gonna get you a lot know. of boys who are gonna DM you, and you never know. You might find someone that you really like who can. And, and it sounds to me like. Since you're such a traveling boy, uh -huh. it gives me the vibe that you need to find those cute little connections that, you know, even if it's long distance, mm. you know, it'll be fun to keep you entertained yeah, while that you're is traveling. I mean, everywhere is only a plain journey away. And I feel like I learned the world is quite small. So never say never. Never say never, honey. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, love. Thank you for thank coming. You. Jordan. Hopefully, we see you again, my love. Yeah, love you very Everybody much. Make some noise yeah. for Miss Jordan content. Listen to his music. Oh my God! Let's bring in the next caller, the next victim. Hello. Hello, relative. <laughs> the lady Shug is here. The lady Shug. Girl, oh I'm not blasted, so I don't want to be on camera. I look like a creature. <sighs> the lady show we live for you regardless of how you look like or what's oh the lady oh you look beautiful lady shug girl the before lady... before i tell my story i wear a smudge honey <gasps> thank you cleanse honey do the colon cleanse the colon cleanse miss lady shug oh my god now miss lady shug tell me what is that story of that one time that you were shook to the core Gosh. by the paranormal sister 
Well, I don't know if mine's considered paranormal. It's actually considered like witchcraft, which is skinwalkers. Um, so a little back tea about skinwalkers. Uh, for my tribe, skinwalkers were kind of, for all the non-Indigenous people to understand, they were kind of like the, what was it? The Twilight, the, like the Taylor Lautner, the Jacob. So they would transform into these animals. So back in the day, they used to transform into these creatures, literally these creatures, and they would deliver messages between different camps in the war. So like these white settlers, the Spaniards, during the war when they were fighting indigenous people, they would use skinwalkers as messengers. And so I don't know where it came, maybe from colonization or whatever, but uh, skinwalkers became and went into witchcraft, black magic. It went to evil. So, well, what is a skinwalker <laughs> like? Is it like a werewolf or? No, it's, it's like different creatures that they transform into like animal form. Oh. Like a, like a human person turns into animal form. Oh, so um, they can turn into like a wolf or like an eagle right. or. Right. Well, yeah. So they, originally they were used as tra transmitters to go back and forth to let during wars and stuff back in the days. But then oh. it went to witchcraft and it went to negativity. So my story, um, it was back in the day, I was li very little. I live on the reservation. If people don't know reservation, I live in New Mexico um, and where, we, where I lived at on my reservation, majority of my relatives don't have running water. We don't have electricity. And so me and a few of my cousins were playing in like a little dam or a little like wash and uh, it was getting dark. And normally when it gets dark, like we would line up all the kids, all the cousins, the smallest one in the front, the, the biggest one behind. So I was kind of like in the, in the front. So the small ones were, you know, were the slower ones. So we would always find a way to go back to our grandma's house. And my grandma used to live like on this plateau of this kind of like a hill. And it was, you know, it's pitch black. So once it gets dark, there's no lights, there's nothing. You're literally in the middle of the darkness. And so we were walking after playing, you know, in the wash. And um, one of my cousins said, okay, he heard something. And he literally said, everybody on the count of three, everybody stop. <gasps> so um, on the count of three, he was like, one, two, three. And we all stopped. And we heard the, like, steps behind us. And it was nobody, all the kids stopped. There was about six of us from like small, small, little to big. There were, so we heard other footsteps and the bigger cousin of, at the time was like, okay, on the count of five, I want you guys just to run because there's somebody chasing us. Um, so I was scared because I was like little, I didn't know. I, was, I didn't know what was going on. Um, so as soon as he said five, so he started counting down. He said, okay, start to just take off, just book it. As soon as you say five, run to grandma's house. And it was like, we were far away. So it was like a little ditch. We had to run pitch black, a whole bunch of sage brushes, bushes everywhere, dirt. I mean, there was no road. So he counted one, two, three, four, five. And I just booked it like the freaking police were chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember we were running and yelling, you know, because that was the time when all our relatives were like visiting my grandma at the time. So they were all there, you know, kicking for the evening. And we just start running, yelling. As we're running, the dogs run past us because they heard whatever was behind us. And so all I know is I ran and um, I just went in to my grandma's house and I just went under the bed. So my uncles came out with guns because we, you know, we they they kind of figured out what was going on. Um, so they got the guns, and so my uncles ran out. I just ran under the bed. I didn't care. I made it. And Did so you all, see what the skinwalker looked um, like? I didn't even want to. Well, I've heard stories about how people how they look like, but I never turned around because it was just like my cousin was like, "Run, book it." Like you don't want to be caught up with that. So the uncles came out after we got there and started shooting at the direction of where the dogs were like at. And all you hear is like, uh, you know, when dogs get hit and they make that sound like, rip, rip, like they got hit. So one of the dog or whatever got hit. And so he was just shooting, shooting, shooting. And I was just crying, crying under the bed. 
and um, we went. They the dogs the dogs came back. All the, all the dogs came back. All the kids were safe. So we fit, we found out that my uncles went back the next day, and they said that they followed a trail of whatever they shot, and it was like a blood trail. So you f- saw the blood trail. You saw the paw print. And um, it, the paw prints turned into human footprints in the oh, dirt. No. Um, <laughs> and so they hit it. Whoever, my, one of my uncles hit it with the shotgun. And um, so that day, it was kind of a, another relative that kind of lived a few miles away, kind of over the Mesa. And come to find out, uh, we found out that that, that house or so wherever that foot trip, the, the foot trails, kind of led to, we found out that one of the relatives mysteriously passed away. Um, and so they didn't say how they died. They didn't say like how they, whatever. Um, so I don't know, that was kind of my thing. I mean, skinwalkers- But you, but you feel I'm like not- maybe that person who died, he was the skinwalker who was out there. Yeah, I think the whole thing that gags me all the time is my uncle saying that they saw the blood trail and then the footprints of an animal turning into human like trips me out all the time. <laughs> oh my God, that's crazy. Now, Miss Lady Shug, you say you live in a reservation and I have to ask this question because I'm wondering and I know the girls are wondering is, because I know you're, you're one of the dolls who she likes to go out there and get herself a piece. Now, <laughs> do you ever bring a piece, do you ever bring piece, a piece over to the reservation? <laughs> yes, Luscious, I turned into the, the skinwalker and go get me a piece. <laughs> <laughs> Do you really? You bring a on, girl? Because <laughs> I know you told me about the monkey app, girl. I know you'll be yep. hooking up with the trade. You'll be getting your piece. But ha- so have you gotten some trade at the reservation or do you have to leave? And no, we have to leave. Like, oh, well, Farmington's like off the reservation. It's like a border town. You know, girl, majority of like my indigenous, not to be shady to my indigenous, you know, gays and dolls, but like they, they love the John Smith, the colonizer. Um, I'm I'm more attracted to like my own people. Like I don't want to I don't want to be Pocahontas to a John Smith, honey. <laughs> That's <not> my fantasy. <laughs> oh my god! So they, so a lot of the girls they leave the reservation, they go where, marry a white man, they go get some yeah. some to yeah. to. to to a white yeah. trade and then um so but you so you what do you do you have to go out and you you go into town and you get yourself a little hotel yeah oh. well, girl, I, well i do but some of the girls they just do like a, a car date <laughs> they go get a little piece of trade at the on the with the in the car yes oh my god because they're not you, normally they're they're you're not allowed to bring anyone on right inside well majority of the time like uh, my community, like we 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 live in all these houses. That's like a household of like five or six. Oh, um, okay. So you can't bring you can't we bring. We don't have any privacy over. like that. Right. So you you either do it outside in the car or you do it in the sagebrush. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Have you ever uh, have you ever uh, had trade that was from the reservation? Um. Yes, but you have to be very careful because you don't want to sleep with your cousin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god but you have um yes i'm i'm being <laughs> i'm being i'm being modest because i i turned my aunt can alash can you say hello to wainima she watches yes. you all the time miss <laughs> wainima hello miss wainima how are you miss wainima so I'm trying to be modest because she's watching, but yeah, I, I do i do get my piece when i want to and I have to make sure that we're not the same clan or we're from the same family. <laughs> oh my God, Miss Lady Shug, how did she be pulling, honey? Miss, I would. I also want to say now that I have you here officially, when you came on my channel the last time, you said, uh, "Girl, I blasted my face, honey. I did a makeup blast." Well, I love that term so much that I've been calling it a segment now. Every time I ask Joella, Joella. <laughs> what did you blast your face with today? So I, I just want to say that is the lady shook. She coined that. She made that. That was her contribution to the world. The lady shook blast her face, honey. She goes in. I love that. I, it sounds so good. The, the dolls are being blasted. <laughs> honey, let me tell you the girls, we blast over here. 
we blast our faces. Uh, but I just, I just wanted to give you the credit because that was all you, bitch. When I heard it, I lived. It was I had never heard that before. Cause you, you said luscious. What did you blast your face with? I said blast my face. I said damn, bitch. <laughs> I was shook, but I lived for it so much. I said, honey, I'm gonna make it into a segment. Joella, what did you blast your face with today? It was the lady I, shrug. I have to give you credit too because like. Girl, you got me onto these, honey. Oh, <laughs> they saved my life. You should get like a credit for it because every time I travel, all of like the stewards and like the the air people on the airlines are like, "Where do you get this from?" I said, "Luscious Massacre." Look her up. <laughs> old Polar, Old Polar should give old you a check. Old Polar, Old Polar. I do. I I especially that fan, the little neck fan. Yeah, it is such a good quality. It is such a good quality. And and um, they last like they can last you for two three days. Yeah. On the you know you know the big one the big one sold out. I'm trying to get another one. Honey, let's not even talk about it because then the girls are gonna go find it. They're gonna go buy it. I promoted that fan so much that I sold them out, and now there's no way to find that fan anymore. You know what I had to do. Damn, I shouldn't even say this because then the no, girls are well, going to go. Tell me later. I'll DM you later because uh, somebody stole mine when we were filming in New Jersey. And it I was need probably Eureka. It was Eureka. Uh, yeah, it was probably. probably Eureka. Because let me tell you, Eureka, the, she will – don't even lend it to her because she will steal that fan. The The last time I was with Eureka, I had two of them. And I, one I was using and the other one I just had it because I always have an extra. She grabbed you. She said, Sissy, you don't need this. Sissy, you don't need this. I said, Eureka, don't you dare. She said, Sissy, it's mine now. You don't need this. And she ran with it and she took it until she took my extra fan. And when I tell you, I was so shook because I was like, no, those, they, they, those fans have become so rare. You cannot find them. They have been sold out for almost a year. And the moment they come on, they sell out right away because it's the only big oh polar fan that it, it, all the other ones anywhere you go online you will only find the small fan yeah oh it's, yeah i i lost i lost mine when we were filming in new jersey yeah they 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 sell out but you know what i have a link i have a link <laughs> and i'll send it to you i will blast you with it <laughs> But it's so, it was so difficult for me. But I just, I love the girls. I just cannot share the link because it will sell out immediately. And I, listen, I'm a big girl and I really, I really need that fan. Yeah. I really need it. <laughs> yeah. But it's not available on the Opolar website anymore. It's, it, it, the moment it comes out, it sells right out immediately. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, how popular those fans have become. They need to they need to step up their production so they can keep up with the demand, honey. They didn't give you a, a discount code. <laughs> and, uh, and and that's also another reason why I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to share any more about this fan because I helped those people sell so much. And, you know, they did they did uh, message me on uh, they emailed me. And we were they were going to partner with me. They were going to give me a code, and then they stopped responding. And I said, "You know what, bitch? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna help you sell this fan anymore because y'all these these people are shady. So unless they slide up in my DMs and make sure that I'm getting me a piece, honey, no ma'am, no ma'am. Joella just sent me a picture of this trade. I know. Oh, oh, he girl, does he look like a skinwalker? <laughs> Let me tell you something. He is sickening, but you know what? Just gag me. He looks like rough, hard, sickening, manly trade. No, sickening, tall, manly trade. And then I, I went down. I went down. He's wearing skinny jeans and he's wearing purple Crocs with a bunch of those little like pendants and stuff. And I'm like, oh, now it's giving woman. <laughs> but you know what? We love a man with a little, a little touch. Yes, a we love touch. our femme tops. We love we our love, femme. We love a femme top. We do. We really do. Well, Miss Lady Shug, the skinwalker, she was coming for you, sister. She was uh, coming for you. I also one of my one of my grandmas, uh, she lives in Colorado, not too far from me. She said one time she was driving back to work because you know, 
living on the reservation to go to town, it's about two to three hour drive. So mm -hmm. our commute to work or to the grocery store is about two to three hours. So she was getting off work. She's driving back home to Colorado. And she said she saw like a bear. It looked like a bear. But she said underneath, she said that she saw like red eyes underneath the bear head. Mm -hmm. And she was shook because she was driving. And she said after she saw that bear, she was kind of like, um, like, uh, not, kind of like paralyzed, kind of like the one that was saying earlier that covering his eyes. She said she don't remember how she got home, but she made it home. But she don't remember the drive from when she saw the bear, the skinwalker bear, until she mm. got home. <laughs> Girl. Girl, all the girls watching this video need to go follow the Lady Shook Drag. Go follow at the Lady Shug Drag on Instagram. Now, Miss Lady Shug, are you ever looking for love? I feel like we need to bring you on as a contestant on Drag Me to Love to help they're, you find some love, drag, bitch. They're going to drag me, bitch. They, you know they don't love the... <laughs> Honey, no, they will. This, listen, on this channel, the girls are always... There's all kind of people watching this show, and there's definitely so many men out there who are attracted to the dolls. Absolutely. Lady Shug, you should come on here. I think you could find love. Lush, real tea with you. You know the last time I've been in a relationship has been about 15 years. <gasps> oh my God. And you were in love? Yeah. And that was my high school sweetheart. <laughs> Lady Shug. You need to you need to you need to come on Drag Me to Love so you can give us all that tea and 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 something tells me that you will, but you need to come on like this. Just come on as yourself. You don't need to, you don't need to put on all that extra, bitch. You look sickening. Come on as the person that you are, as as your your true self. Give him give him give him the fantasy. And something tells me that you will. You're gonna th that man is watching. He's gonna be watching on Thursday. You need to come on. It's probably, gonna, it's probably gonna be some white guy wanting the Pocahontas fantasy. <laughs> But 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 you know what, Shug? What if he? What if what if that white man? What if that white man is the man? Well, he better buy me some land, land back, honey. <laughs> she said, "I need. If he's gonna be the man, he's gonna have to refer. Give me reparations, bitch. I'm gonna have to decolonize something, not just his boot." <laughs> <laughs> I live. No, you honestly, you should. You absolutely should. And you need to make sure that he gives you a deed and it's in your name and your name only. Yes. Lash, you need to come back and visit New Mexico. That'll be fierce. I don't I don't think I've actually ever been to New Mexico. Oh yeah, that's right. We talked about that. You Yeah, you I didn't when I did I did not come on to where here until season two. And I yeah, I met you in uh, Hawaii. 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 It was in Hawaii. That's right. <gasps> that was such a fierce experience. Oh, God. Bitch, that, you know, that was the first time I had to shave my eyebrows because it was so dang hot. <laughs> oh, so, so that you could actually get through with the drag. I don't, how, how does Shangela do it? Because she doesn't shave her eyebrows off. How does she, how did she keep that on? Oh, well, you know, with Shangi, you know, with Shangi, um, oh, she Shangi has the eyebrow. No, 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 no. She, she, I, sometimes I do block her. I usually block the tips. And then oh. with with blocking the tips, I'm able to open up her eyes more. But uh, Shangela does not sweat. She's very fortunate. She does not sweat. And girl, even in crazy, crazy oven conditions, she'll stay intact. Yeah. I, I, there's... There's been maybe like a, maybe like less than a handful of times that I've seen her sweat, but it was because we were out like at a, she was performing at like Pride outside in the sun, like in Miami beach. And she went out and she was performing and God, 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 go like going in and then she'll sweat. But, but even then it's not sweat. Like if I, when I was in Miami, the moment I walked out, Oh my God! It was death. It was death. Not Sh Shangela is tiny, tiny. She does not sweat at all, honey. And it's it it's it's. So honestly, you have I'm I, I always tell her I'm like you bitch. She does not sweat. Yeah. 
I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't sweat too much either. Being an indigenous person and also just being indigenous, I don't really get too much facial hair. I mean, my shaving is probably just tweezing like a little here and there, and then that's my shaving. <laughs> <laughs> Miss Lady Shug, well, thank you for calling in, Miss Lady Shug. Everyone, please go and follow the Lady Shug at. La oh, hold on, we have a special guest coming in. <sighs> oh, <I'm stupid. laughs> This man is coming. Oh. No, the, the one you sent me the photo. His name is the Bull. No, I. So know I thought he was fake. So I said, "Can you call me on video just so I can verify?" Because he's coming from Hollingen, and he's like, "Yeah." And he called me, and I'm like, oh, "His teeth are perfectly like veneered." Oh, his screening was the Bull veneer. No wonder. Oh, so I know exactly where you found him, the bull. Mm -hmm. The bull and the doll. You know, Shangela did a movie and it's going to come out. It's called The Bull and the Doll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, that, and that's going to be you tonight. You're the bull and the doll. So I need, well, that, that man was a 20. I know. And I need, a, I need to find the broom. Listen, when I tell y'all, y'all don't, y'all, y'all are not ready. This woman, she's about to get destroyed by like a football player. He's like yeah. seven foot tall, muscles. Like he's about to come fully over tatted, and destroy this woman. Fully tatted, looked like he came out of prison, but he's dressed really nice, except for the Crocs. But I wear Crocs, so I can't, you know, judge. <laughs> <sighs> Oh my God, Joella was on the hunt and she got herself a meal. I've already had three. No. Yeah, I just retouched. I put my lips back on and I <laughs> pressed the powder real quick. Oh my God, I've never seen you so hungry, sister. What's happening? Oh, he said my address is not pulling up. I'll be right back. <gasps> oh my God, I'm a little jealous. She's about to get wrecked. This Girl, woman is about to get wrecked. Buffet tonight. <laughs> oh my God! Well, Miss uh, Lady Shook, thank you so much for calling in and sharing your paranormal activities. Everyone, please go and follow the Lady Shook Drag. I think you need to come back on Thursday, honey, and we need to find you some love, Lady Shook. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> well, we'll we'll definitely invite you on to bring you back on. Okay. Sounds Thank good. you, Miss Lady Shug. Have a beautiful night, sister. My, the, my relatives, the Lady yes. Shug. Everyone make some noise for the Lady Shug. My relatives, I'll make sure to smudge for all y'all watching. We don't want these to come to our houses and through our screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, y'all. Uh... Bye, mi amor. <gasps> the Lady Shug. You guys, I have a couple of callers on the line, but I'm honestly... It's two in the morning. I think I have to wrap it up. I think I have to wrap it up. I have a, few, a couple of people on the line, but honey, I need to go get me some food. Now, Joella, it's making me feel like I need to go get me some trade, honey. I have to, we've, we've been here over three hours. Listen, if you guys want this show to stick around, let's make it a success. Please like, like, like this video. Please uh, make sure you guys like this video. Um, hold on. Make sure you guys like this video. Make sure um, you 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 uh, comment, you subscribe, and you turn on the little gay notifications, honey. Let me see what's going on over here. Oh. 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 You guys, um, you do you guys remember Miss Mick? Miss Mick, she was on our channel at the very beginning. Actually, she was the first victim. She, um, I love that Mick, she was able to stream, 
she figured out a way to stream this YouTube video onto her channel because I invited her on. And so this entire video has been streaming on Miss Mick's YouTube channel. So if you guys want to go see that and show your support, Miss Mick Boyle, she is currently live with Luscious Massacre. She's been streaming this live stream on her YouTube channel. And I live for that. We need to figure out, I need to, I need to teach Joella how to do this so that she can stream on her channel. That'd be fierce. I love that it gives you the chances and the opportunities to do that. Oh my God, everyone like this video. Let's get to 400. Let's get to 400 likes right now. If we can get to 400 likes, I will keep this video on the channel. Uh, well, I mean, I'm going to keep it regardless. But what I mean is we will make this channel. Let's make this video be a hit. Let's make this video be a hit. So that way. So that, oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Let's get to 400. Let's do 425 likes, honey. Don't be shady, honey. Support the dolls. Let's get to 425 likes. And I will make sure that this video, that, that, that we don't cancel the show. And we, 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 we come back for next Sunday. Let me write this down. I'm going to write it down on my calendar. I have my calendar. This is my weekly calendar. I'm barely going to work. Let me see. Let me get the pen. So what is today? This is the week of July the 11th. Let me see. Did we get the 425 likes? We have to get it before I leave this live stream. Let's see. We are at 400, we're at 410, we need 15 more. And right here, where is it? No, it's over here. On Sunday, you see my schedule? On Let me write this down. So on Thursdays, on Tuesdays, we do going through the gigs. Going through the gigs. Going through the gigs, okay. What episode are we on? I don't know. I think episode three. Uh, episode three, going through the gigs. On Thursday, we're moving. We're doing Drag Me to Love on Thursdays. Drag Me to Love. I have to, I have to make my little calendar so we can stay on theme. We can stay on schedule. If we can get to 425 likes right now, I will make sure that my calendar... Shows Shook by the Paranormal episode two for Sunday. Did we get it? <gasps> We're four likes away, girls. We're four likes away. Come on, girls. Come on, girls. Activate, girls. Monday. What are we doing on Mondays? Does anyone remember what we do on Mondays? Let me check. I know Tuesday's going through the gigs. Drag Me to Love is on Thursdays. When is Next Caller? Because Next Caller is the show where people just call in uh, if they have fan questions, if they want to just kiki, they want to, whatever it is that they want to do. Let me see. Mostly fan questions. That was on, that was on Wednesday. So next caller is on Wednesday. What was on Monday? Let me see. We do need to bring another guest. We are having Manny. Oh, we're actually already on going through the gigs episode four this week. So it's episode four this week. We are going to have Manny and Mr. Prada join us. Let me see if I can get Manny and Prada to join us on Monday, because that would be really cool. Mon Manny and Manny and Prada are going to come on the show on Monday. I'm going to ask and see if they're available. Um, I think, yeah, we're going to. You know what? On Monday, it's just going to be a regular episode of The Girls Want a Battle. The Girls Want a Battle. Oh, honey, my, my schedule is full, baby. Okay, and then um, on Saturday, to, to be determined, because we just canceled Cooking the Future, and it seems like we are going to be maybe holding on to Shook by the Paranormal because, if I'm not mistaken, did we reach it? <gasps> we got four. Okay, so Shook by the Paranormal on Sunday. You guys did it. Shook by 
the paranormal episode two on Sunday. Okay, so that leaves... Oh, Next Caller is on Wednesday. I really like that show. Next Caller kind of... I live for that. That was a hit. You guys really like that. Next Caller, episode two. Uh, and so that that just leaves my Saturday open. Friday is my day off. Which is not even really a day off, to be honest. Saturday. Saturday. Well, I'll figure out what we're going to do for Saturday. We might do another episode of The Big Girls. Who knows? But this is my schedule. This is my schedule. Um, I love having a, a full schedule. And, and, and being busy having a routine, knowing that I'm coming on here to entertain the children. I love that. I love, 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 love that. So you guys are going to see me here every day. I'm a daily live streamer. That's what I've become. Uh, Drag Me to Love is going to be episode six. Oh my God, we're already on episode six of Drag Me to Love. It's a hit show. You guys live for that one. Next caller, going through the gigs, Drag Me to Love, Shook by the Paranormal, and then on Mondays is a regular Girls Wanna Battle, and we need to find a guest for Monday. We need to have a famous guest come in on Monday. It's either going to be Manny or Prada. I also have uh, Jiggly Caliente says she wanted to come on. Um, there's so many girls that I need to bring on Monday. That's going to be on Monday. Maybe I'll get Mistress to call in. We'll figure it out. You guys... Joella might be burned out. She's been taking off lately. You know what? The the the, the I love that with for Joella though. You 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 she she contributes in which in the way that she can. I stay on a little longer, but you know Joella is entitled and allowed to have her space, have her moment. And I and I I told her sister, only come on when you want to. There's no pressure. I'm never gonna rush you. I'm never going to make you feel like you need to do it. Like I want, I don't want this to be a stressful environment. I don't, I want her to come on when she wants to, when she wants to have fun, when she wants to have a kiki, it has to be fun. You know, it can't, it can't be this thing where, you know, she committed for an hour and, and that's honestly, that's all we commit for. I also commit only for an hour. I will never leave the live earlier than an hour, but if I stay on longer, cool. I also like to be respectful and try to stay on because I get a lot of like, listen, right now there's two people still waiting on the line, but I, I did tell the girls a while back. I'm not, I'm not taking any more callers, babies. This was the wrap. This was, we've hit three hours on the show. So thank you for the people who, who, you know, we'll save you for the next episode. Call in next week on Sunday, shook by the paranormal episode two and share your paranormal story. But, you know, Joella right now, she wanted to have a piece of trade, and she's entitled to that, and I love that for her. I want that for her. I want her to have fun. I want her to enjoy herself. I want her to, you know, get herself a piece. Sex is therapy, baby. You guys know that I believe this wholeheartedly. Sex is therapy, and sometimes we need a little bit of therapy, honey. Cooking the Future is canceled, officially. So if you guys like the vibe... Go watch the show because that's going to be the only episode. But you know what? Maybe next sat Saturday we'll do a tarot a tarot show, uh, and we'll find. We'll, I'll come up with a new name, a new concept, and Joella and I will just come on and, and read cards. Because I will say, you guys loved the tarot cards. I could I I could feel that y'all were living because I got so many people that I had to stop. I had to be like, hey, you know what? We're done. I can't do this. Like, I got tired of how many people wanted their cards read. So, and I I feel like you guys really enjoy it. So, maybe I should do tarot. You know what? I'm going to write it down. That's what we're going to try. On Saturday, we're going to do the tarot show. What should I call it? Does tarot card not count as paranormal? No, because paranormal stories is more like a scary ghost story or... If you've seen like a, a crazy, something crazy that's happened to you. Tarot cards is more tapping into that third eye and tapping into, you know, I use it coming from my Mexican background. My my grandfather, my mother's father, he was a brujo. 
he was, you know, he he actually and he focused more on the dark side, but he was one of those he was he could he could he would read the future. He could he could speak to um if I'm not mistaken, he would speak to the devil. <laughs> It's kind of scary when my mom tells me about it. I'm kind of, I, I get a little scared, but uh, he would talk to witches. Uh, in the Mexican culture, they say that a witch can transform into what they call a lechuza, which is like an, like, it's not really an owl, but I guess that's the easiest way to explain it. Witches turn into like these humongous, not a regular owl either, a hum, this humongous, like, bird-like creature that's like a big ass owl. And um, my grandfather was known for um, calling them down, and they would they would come down, and they would they would come, and they would sit right next to him. And these are creatures that, in the Mexican culture, in the Mexican realm, uh, they're feared because they Mexicanos genuinely believe that it's like a, it's like Lady Shook just said, a skinwalker. It's a witch who turns into this this humongous bird to be able to fly. And um, those creatures are, they're not friendly. They're they are not friendly. And if you see one, you're supposed to run. And you're supposed to run away. And my grandfather would, uh, he was actually known to be able to call them down. He he would call them down and they would come and they would, they would sit right in front of him. And he would talk to them. It was... Um, my mom said that that was something that my grandma was very scared of, terrified of. And he had books. Um, he had books of, like, dark. He was not one of those um, white witches. He was he, he was known as a brujo in, in the world of the darkness. And he would read, you know, he would read the future. And um, I feel like I've always been very connected to that. And I've always felt that energy and that vibe. And it's funny, but, you know, when I read, when I pull the tarot cards, obviously I'm a, I'm a comedian and I make it funny because uh, that's just who I am from my dad's side of my family. I'm I'm a comedian through and through. My father is a comedian. He just, you know, unfortunately he never, he was never able to develop it. Uh, but I, too, like my dad is one of the funniest people in the world that I know. My dad is a true natural born he was born with the charisma to make people like laugh out loud. Like he's known for like when you're around my dad, it's constant laughing, giggles. Like he is a, a, a comedian through and through. And so I channel a lot of that energy when I read cards, but I also feel a connection where I actually do. I do. It's it's funny, but when I pull cards, sometimes I'm like I'm shook because I'm like, oh my god, this. It's it's coming from a connect a deeper connection that I have, and I think I developed that from my grandfather, uh, from my dad's side. I'm sorry, from my mother's side. But anyways, you guys, I had a lot of fun tonight. I enjoyed myself. I love these kind of stories. Joella and I had initially we would do shook by the paranormal shook by the paranormal only during Halloween. But I was like, girl, it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a, we have Miss Lady Shook. She said, Lush, you are a protector and a natural witch, especially because you are fam and queer. I do, I do, I do, I do believe that. I do believe that I definitely, there's, there's a, there's an energy there that was passed down, a magical force. The, um, the Bruja magic. The Bruja Jota magic. I call it Jota magic. I have that Jota magic for sure. The um, I'm going to buy some new tarot cards so that next week I have more uh, tarot cards to choose from. And we can do some readings. So Saturday we're definitely going to do tarot. I think we're definitely going to channel the tarot. I have a cousin of mine. She does, um, every time she talks on the phone... She will read you. She'll read your future. She'll read you things that you're going through, things that no one else knows. She'll be like, so what happened with this? And I'm like, hey, I haven't told a single soul. How do you know that? And she's like, you know how I know. So I think my cousin out of all my family members, 
she's the one who had the strongest connection to to that to that energy that my grandfather I think he passed it down to not all of us but to some of us and I think my cousin she got it the strongest cuz she's the she's the she's the one who I truly believe has a deep, deep connection to that magical, mystical realm. Uh, and she reads the caracoles. And she will, like, you'll talk to her on the phone, and she will fully, like, she will read you for filth. I feel like I should call her and ask her and so she can give me some advice and, on how she does those things because I would like to, to uh, you know, explore this more. I would like to explore it more. Uh, okay, you guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. This was a, the newest episode, the beginning episode, actually the first episode of Shook by the Paranormal. I love you guys so much. Before I go, I just want to say if you're going through the gigs, do not allow the gigs to go through you. I love you guys so much. I will see you tomorrow. Oh, my God, I need to call Manny. We need to get Manny and Prada on tomorrow.